Parvision. The planet is calling you. It's, it's Mother falling. Earth. Yeah, it's yeah. falling. It's falling. It's falling out of orbit, brother. We it have to save it. Back up. It needs life alert. Yeah, because the Gorosi are so damn old. Uh, <laughs> uh, how you doing? I'm I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, uh, the planets fallen. The plan planets planets multiple planets have fallen. Or or do you like the other translation? Because it could be like the falling stars. Do you like falling stars or planet fall? I like falling stars more, but planet fall isn't bad. It reminds me of Moonfall, which is the movie that mm. came out last year. It's really good. Mm. Wait, Moonfall? Wasn't that yeah. a James Bond movie? No, 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 no. Moonfall came out last year, and uh -huh. it was about um the moon falling out of orbit. Oh, so the title just spoiled the entire movie? Yeah, yeah. Moonfall, two hours and ten minutes, and it has some of the best acting I've ever seen in my life. And has a great plot too. Like like okay. the moon turns out to be an alien spaceship. It's so crazy. As good as Avatar the live action. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just on uh, uh, the same level as Avatar live action. That was phenomenal. It was so good. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, I, I, it was so bad. Friend day. I completely get what's being said now. Yeah, yeah. You you understand the words being said. Um, speaking of words being said. Yamato what? Momonosuke. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, things are going on over there. Apparently, yeah. Yamato is traveling around Wano. That's cool. Yeah, that was kind of like the baseline defense for people who thought that Yamato was going to stay there. Like, yeah, but like if Yamato wants to be Odin, then she's going to travel all of Wano first, right? And then leave Wano, right? But she, she had been stuck on Onigashima. So, you know, like technically she doesn't even know what she's protecting like if we think about it yeah she's just protecting a bunch of uh unknown people a bunch of fodder yeah, yeah. so you know solid uh, i saw someone i think it was king of lightning um you good <laughs> yeah i'm great <laughs> no uh, i choked on my own spit no oh, god the worst uh yeah if only my own worst enemy okay um but um yeah, I saw someone in King of Lightning stream saying that once once you're a cover story character, you're done. And I was just like no. laughing in, in the context of like Yamato joining. And I was just like, you're not wrong. Like you show up in the cover story. It's kind of it's kind of wraps a little bit, you know, just a just a tiny bit. No, no, this is a 2024 cover story, though. Like, dude, come on. We had the Kuzan and uh, Van Auger scene, right? Like I, I, have, I have high hopes. I think we could see, like, the Black Bear Pirates invading. Yamato's like, yo, I got whooped. I got to go to the Straw Hats. I don't know. That's I, that, that could be That's copium, fair. but there is a chance that we get a really good outcome out of this. Yeah, except here, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I do think the title of the series does matter a little bit. It's Oni Child Yamato and the Holy Inari Shrine Pilgrimage Volume 2. So it's, like, very... Like, you know, kind of, I, I mean, I guess the last one was what, Germa Double Six's Cold Excursion. And in that, we got, like, Vegapunk. And in that, we got, like, um, you know, everything else. The Blackbeard like, stuff. stuff. So, like, the name. But, like, at the end of the day, like, at least with the Germa stuff, it made sense. Like, it connected to all of these things in a slight way. Like, they were in the same place, whatever. This one's just, like, kind of, we're volume two already in is it going to end with yamato seeing the blackbeard pirates that'd be kind of crazy you know what i mean i feel like uh, now that i you feel like it, it could yeah, like, yeah Jer right. jerma double six went all the way to neo mads and then we even saw the gorosei in it it's like going into the like the the jerma double six cover story seeing the title you would not expect neo mads okay okay but like Okay, okay, here's the difference though. Jerma wins technically by the end of their like they don't they don't lose by the end of their own cover story. But if Blackbeard shows up, that means Yamato loses. You know what I mean? Like Yamato's yeah, own yeah. cover story. Yeah, <laughs> you can lose in your cover story. It happens. It happens. Nah, that's that is that is disrespectful, dude. We left that's her on good. Wano and then did defeated is her the, like, like, uh, Oni Child Yamato and the Holy Inari Shrine Pilgrims. The end of it, she's just what devastated like blackbeard uh shiryu um oh my god caribou is probably going to be there too oh no Van auger yeah like that's that's Vasco a rough shot 
Katarine Devon. Katarine Devon might just chop off Yamato's head. I don't even know, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, does she get crazy. out of this? I don't know. You know, it'd be kind of crazy if I forget if you said it or somebody else said it that like um, Katarine Devon's power. Oh no, this is a common idea. Like she might have the power to transform other people, like with the things. And I think you said it too um, before uh, with the, with the the context of them going to fisherman island and uh mm, yeah you know, ancient weapons but if like yamato's like i'm odin and then she changes her him her into odin that'd be crazy you know what i mean like that'd be kind of sick that'd be kind of scary yeah that would be scary do you think but... yamato would want to become yamato again or do you think they'd want to stay odin uh i don't know It'd be funny if she was just like, this isn't what I meant. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I this isn't what about, I meant. Not like this. Yeah, not like this. It, but, like, obviously we can't get all that in the cover story, right? It'd just be... Hey, you, you know, never know. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? What's up? We, I'm going to travel all over Wano just like Odin. But Odin's story got interrupted by Whitebeard. So Yamato's story getting interrupted by Blackbeard would be kind of that kind of fits, you know what See, I mean? See, I like it. You know what I? You know what I would like? This is a this is head cannon no me right here. I, this is me going crazy, firing off all my neurons. But mm -hmm. I would like it if Blackbeard invades, interrupts Yamato's story, and the only reason Yamato gets out is because of Kaido. Oh, ooh, some might call you a softy, Sai. Some wait, why? Some like fatherly love. The, Kaido comes in to save the day and says, A little bit. You're, you're my son. No one hurts my son. I'm not Whitebeard. I wouldn't let Ace die. You know, like that kind of thing. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be that kind of thing. I, I could see Kaido just wanting to fight, though. <laughs> imagine, I kind of think about it. Like, imagine Kaido did come to Marineford and he did kill Whitebeard. But, like, for some reason, he, like, because Ace would have fit in his calamities. Because, like, cards and so you know like king queen ace jack you know like that would have been a great lineup and um it would have been funny if a marine for it, he just decided like ace you're gonna be one of mine now after killing whitebeard obviously ace wouldn't like that but then kaido would probably win you know what i mean like he oh yeah could yeah like he i mean i'm not saying that like you know the admirals couldn't all stop him but like kaido's kind of crazy you know what I mean? like yeah i mean I feel like the Ace situation with Kaido would go the same way with Ace and Whitebeard, where yeah. Ace didn't want to join Whitebeard's crew, then Whitebeard just beat him up like a million times, <laughs> and then he's like, hey, you know what? I guess I'm your son after all. I think it's going to be the same thing for Kaido, right? Just lock him in a cave, beat him every other day, and oh. be like, hey, Ace, you're now my prison captain guy. Yeah. Do you what think... do the Beast Pirates do? <laughs> do they just, like, chill? Yeah, I have no idea. I, I mean, they just Ace, chill. Would... Ace would go the way of Kid. I think Ace is Kid plus Luffy in a lot of ways. Because, like, Kid, like, kind of was, like, this headstrong, always running in, died to Shanks, right? Yeah. And, like, Ace was the guy who couldn't turn his back on people who interrupted, like, like insulted his family, right? So, he, in that way, he had, like, a character defect in ingrained in him. And, but then he also has, like, the Luffy side, because, like, he technically could use hockey, unlike Kid. So, like, when you think about it, Kid plus Luffy equals... Equals Ace. Ace. Yeah. Yeah, huh. I could see that. Yeah, actually, you know what? He The thing is, Ace is also depicted to be actually, like, when it mattered, he was smart. Like, in Alabasta, like, he had, like, everything planned out, like, like of how at the end, and then Nami was like, oh, my God, you're actually, like, really smart compared to your brother. Are you guys even related? Like, that kind of a thing. Because, like, obviously, when Ace is goofing around, he's goofing around. But then when it mattered, he was more like a serious kind of, like, Zoro or Law character. So it might actually be that L Law, Kid, and Luffy, you combine them a little bit of Law. Not all of Law, some of Law. And then you get, you get Ace. Huh. That's an interesting thing. That's like a video idea. That's a video idea. Hey, I think Ace is related to these guys. <laughs> Oda Oda missed Ace so much he divided up his character into Law and Kid, which kind of does you know like Law is technically like he's like a brother to Luffy now. Heck, yeah, sort of, sort of. Sort of I would yeah. say so. I would say even Kid to an extent. Yeah. They all feel like um maybe not brothers, 
but they remind me of like the next door neighbor's kid yeah right like, yeah. like you're going up in the cul-de-sac and then you got like three kids running around that's a uh, that's kid law and luffy mm -hmm. but i guess you could say the same thing for ace and sabo <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so uh with this cover page though like where do you think it's gonna go so i i, I took my guess uh what's your guess do you think she's actually gonna complete this trip because i don't think so like what the hell is a holy inari shrine like have we seen that i don't we know. haven't right I didn't look into it, but I think we've seen two shrines, and I, I like the, 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 this is either the shrine that Zoro and Hiori were were shacked up in, or it's the shrine that Odin made all of his concubines in. And I don't know if there was other shrines, and I don't know if those are the same shrines, but I'm pretty sure those are the two shrines that I remember. There's also the the Kurozumi shrine, I think, that like yeah. Koko, Orochi and Higurashi were in and I doubt that's the same one that Zoro was in and that's probably not the same one that could you imagine if Odin ran a like a brothel house but in reverse no wait just him in at the age of eight in a Kurozumi shrine that'd be so that'd be pretty that, cursed yeah 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 like that's some ancestral shit right there <laughs> so we do not have a Inari Shrine in Wano yet that we've seen. So I this is gonna be like brand new. In I I'm a, I'm assuming the Inari Shrine is probably core to the uh uh what's what's Yamato's wolf thing name? Like maybe it's related to the wolf mythical wolf. Okuchi uh, no Makami? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Okuchi no Makami. Yeah, maybe that has some relation to Inari Shrine, possibly. Yeah. I looked up Inari. It's like the god of rice and agriculture. Oh. Well, the Okuchi well, no Makami was the guardian of people. Yeah. I feel like uh, Inari has a lot of meanings. That was just like the first one I found. And then I didn't yeah. read past that. So, you know, I, I bet Inari has many different meanings because that's just how Japanese works. But uh, yeah. yeah, I guess we're going to see a lot of rice farmers. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to my family. Shout out to the fam jam. Shout out to the fam. Hopefully we'll see them in the cover story then picking up that mm -hmm. rice. Yeah, I uh, love to see back. it. Yeah, throwback. <laughs> Would you be a rice farmer if you could? Um, I don't like, know. like imagine you're in like a not China, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Cambodia. Okay. You're a Cambodian rice farmer. No, no, no. Your parents are rice farmers. Would you be a rice farmer too, or would you want to leave the village? Um, I don't know. I. That's a tough one. I guess it would depend on like the circumstances. You know what I mean? Like you're dirt poor. I mean, I, if that's the circumstances, then like, you know what's funny about that though? You see, and I'm not, I'm not generalizing here, but you see a lot of videos coming from like rural, like I don't even know Tibet and Nepal and like all these like farming places, and like all those people are so happy. Like they're just happier, and they're just like making. They're like cooking on like a, like a rock stove thing. That's obviously kind of sick. Like the way they're cooking, they're like master. Like they would probably get a Michelin star if they opened up because it was like that. Like it was you got the experience through the camera. It was crazy, and it's like little kids doing it too. You know, like the parents would teach the kids how to cook like mad young. So you have like this three year old that's just like like skinning a fish or something or doing some insane prep process for this meal and then it looked looks super dangerous but it's a three-year-old so it's fine i guess plot armor and and they're just all happy they're just genuinely like the kid looks like they're enjoying life um it honestly doesn't look like the parents beat him into like learning that whole process so uh, hey you can't you can't the grass is always greener on the other side but like if that greener is just pure happiness like i don't know that 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 might be worth your while i don't know you have to experience it yeah like you got to be a rice farmer for a day to find out or like you'd have to be born in that life i feel like being born in this like american standard it skews you to no end and I yeah. think that applies without like that, just the happiness thing. Like I feel like I feel like if you bring up healthcare, and then at, like the international like first world countries all laugh at us. They're like, 
you guys like i forget someone said they pay like 60 percent tax in california and then they don't have like good public schools or health care or like anything or and then all the streets have potholes and then and, you know all the first world countries are like so what are your taxes go to and it's like could, both of them couldn't tell you you know it's like i don't fucking know um but yeah so yeah yeah i would i think just, we need more farmers dude Hey, I think, uh, see, if I was, if I was God of the world, yeah, I'd probably give everybody a little patch of land so they could uh -huh. farm some crops. Uh huh. So that's like a fiefdom. It's a fief. You're giving people yeah. fiefs. Mm. So I do that, and then I'd also do my monster idea, where I just have a bunch of hybrid monsters come out of the ocean oh. and populate populate the earth. Yeah, you know, you know that theory. No, no, no. no. I thought. Because you said monsters, and I was like, Johan, you're just going to go out there and like murder people? Like, what's happening? No, 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 no not, not pull a Johan. But <laughs> Johan's getting better in the final the final saga that I'm in. Yeah. Getting, getting like, institutionalized better? Or, like... <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? No, you, when you said getting better, like, better as a character, or, like, as in he's better at oh, killing Oh, he's, he's, he's getting better at killing people. That's something I've been waiting for, for in the whole series. I'm like, Johan, please, kill more people. Yeah, yeah. The, see, some, some, you know, the naive would think, like, oh, he's getting better. Like, he's getting help. He's going to his AA meetings and stuff like that. But, no, you meant the opposite. Getting yeah, better. I just wanted a better villain. And he's, he's, he's glowing up in the final episodes. Yeah, he's meeting your... He's, he's matching expectations, you know? That's yeah, what finally, you love to dude. See out of any, anybody. You always want them to meet your expectations. Now, that ass, I think the main villain of Monsters is just Roberto. <laughs> he's, oh, my God. More the, of a medicine wait, than Johan in some instances. Roberto is the, the... Is he the police people? No, he's... So, Roberto is uh, Johan's right-hand man, essentially. Was well, not the... not exactly a right hand man. Like Roberto like shows up and he wants to help Johan fulfill his like dream. Wait, but what was his affiliation? I thought he was like the helper, like the like he did things, you know, like for him. He, he, I would consider him like a hitman. Like, he oh, just kind of shows up and does what he, he's yeah. like a he's a handyman. One day handyman. he's a husband. Next day he's mm. an alcoholic. Next day he's a a sex worker. Like yeah, Roberto's thought, kind of everywhere. I, yeah, I forgot, but I was like, wasn't he in, like, wasn't he uh, masquerading? And I feel like I remember one time it was like, he was like a secretary or something like that. I forget. Though. Yes, he went to, he, he masqueraded as, as, a, as a therapy guy. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. No, no, no. He masqueraded as a lawyer, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some kind of like official stuff. I'm forgetting, but yeah. Whenever you yeah. need somebody to fill a role, you just fucking bring Roberto back from the dead for the tenth time. Yeah, better. He's a better, better call Saul. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so the first page of this chapter, par, we see black lightning hitting the sky. Mm -hmm. Rikishi <laughs> has been summoned. We see blue grass and doll. They say, "What in the world is going on over there?" The Marines are all shocked. And then we see that Frankie has finally made it to the giant ship. Officially, I mean, last chapter he was like in front of it. This chapter, he's still in front of it. Never mind. They, they made no moves. But hey, everything's going on. And uh, how do you feel about it? I think one of my favorite parts of this first page was the giraffe going za 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 za. It was just kind of funny. I was just like being all serious, and I just see a giraffe zooming across, and just, the uh, the thing is just za 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 za. I'm like, who is the giraffe? Is it? smiling. He's happy, dude. He's he's living yeah. life. You see that? He yeah, loves yeah. being ridden by bluegrass. Yeah, there's something about this giraffe that, like, you know, it made me feel like Kaku was in the story. Um, and then <laughs> Kaku's actually here doing something. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very Kaku yeah. W. I miss my I miss Kaku. Kaku's kind of like if we're sad about Zoro and Luchi not showing up for like half a year, Kaku hasn't shown up for more, you know, and he's just in a bubble. Someone's got to help my man, you know, you know, this is going to sound uh, this is going to be a little bit controversial of a take, but I kind of wish Kaku got a fight here. Mm -hmm. Like the same time when Luchi was fighting Zoro, like maybe Jinbei, you know, like obviously Jinbei is going to win just like how we knew Zoro was going to win. But just give him a fight, you know, like give him like a good old little off screen, you know, give him that one about, page. It could have even it could have even been a double KO. Like imagine we have Jim Bay killing Kaku in one panel, Zoro beating Luchi in the other. I think that would be that would have been kind of cool. 
what do you think about Kaku versus Frankie? Kaku versus Frankie. Kaku slaughters Frankie, dude. That's uh, it's interesting because like I saw like I forget when, but like Frankie takes no L's. Like Frankie hasn't lost in the like period, and I'm like. Yeah, but, like, it's Kaku. And, like, people brought up, like, oh, Big Mom. He ran over Big Mom, and he wasn't even scared. He, like, was trying to box her, shot lasers at her. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, if he fights, like, a Kaku, I'm pretty sure Kaku wins. But then I was thinking about it because Kaku is technically a shipwright. And that would be kind of, you know, like... Oh, shipwright versus shipwright, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would even consider Kaku's main occupation as shipwright over whatever... Because he's just... He's he's so happy go lucky and he's just always different. It, it, whether it's CP9, CP0, or in Gali La, he's always just like him, and he loves ships. That's his. That's his. You know, little tism there is that he's just like is a ship. Like he's freak. a ship guy. He's a yeah. ship guy and a kid guy. He loves kids. Yeah. I feel like all yeah. of CP9, they're they're all like really friendly outside of their assassination job. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, Except for Spandom. Spandom's like a monster in and of himself, yeah. but yeah, yeah. yeah all, the rest of CP9, like, they were really nice to that town. Like, that's one of the reasons why I love the bad guys, bro. Like, people are like, oh, but they're bad people. It's like, yeah, but that's that's if you're a pirate. Like, if you're like a regular ass dude, like, yeah. CP9, they actually will help you. Like, they'll go as, out of their way to help you. As long as you're not on, like, their mission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you're not, like, the assassination target or a pirate. Like, CP9 will actively help your town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. Like, technically... I mean, water, same with Crocodile. Like, Crocodile's a little crazy. But well, like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, when I said Crocodile, I meant in terms of uh, if you're an animal. Because he, <laughs> he held out the umbrella for the dog. Like, okay. I love that the bad guys in this series have their soft spots. That's what I really enjoy. Not a lot of series do that. And yeah. um, I appreciate it, Oda. Thank you. Thank you for like, humanizing them. Like in Water Seven, right? Technically, their mission was exposing government corruption. Technically, right? Because Iceberg was uh, fostering a criminal that was like uh, ordered to death and had the ancient weapon uh, that could destroy the world. Yeah. So, like, technically, from if like they explain that to the citizens, the citizens are like, wait what iceberg well, hello mayor our mayor was out here harboring criminals like that you know and yeah. so like, technically you know the civilians they were doing them a solid now the fire that they cause and all that that hubba baloo sure they pinned it on the straw hats but like the straw hats you know, are criminals let's be real yeah yeah so it's like and, and the straw hats weren't exactly the most like the best citizens in Water 7. They, like, destroyed buildings. They ran up on a family, just started beating them up, you know. Sure, that family robbed them first, but, like, you know. Then they beat up all the innocent... How many of those people were actually involved in kidnapping Usopp? It was probably, like, three of them, right? But then they instead just walked up to their house and beat up the kids, beat up the, the cousins. None of no. them were there. Okay, so, so the Frankie family, to me, they're a gray area of the law where if somebody were to beat them up, I, I kind of, like, turn a blind eye, you know? Yeah, but, like... Like, whatever, at, dude. At the end of the day, it's not like they got a RICO charge for that. Like, they robbed Usopp. <laughs> if you brought them to court, you bring yeah. the three that robbed Usopp. You don't bring down the whole... Like, what are the little kids... The kids are probably like hopscotch just wearing armor. Like, wow, we love you, Frankie. And then, like, why are we getting beat up? We didn't even know who was this Because they're wrong? ugly. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I mean... another incredible thing. Frankie found, like, all, like, similar people. Like, it's yeah, kind of he found all the orphans, right? He Something. found all the orphans and people with no homes or jobs. And then he said, hey, come be a thug with me. <laughs> come come join the Frankie family and yeah. be even worse. And that's the thing. A lot of people forget Frankie was in the black market. Like, he knew about the slave trade. He was the one who, like, taught us a lot about it or some of it going into Sabaudi. And that's because of his Frankie family connection. That's how we got Adam Wood also was the black yeah. market. So like Frankie was in that sauce, dude. Oh, thinking. Okay, wait, wait. So that's interesting that you mentioned that, that now since we're going to Elbaf pretty soon. But if Adam Wood is from Elbaf and that's like confirmed, do you think there's going to be like a weird black market trade going, to, uh, going down over there? Like we'll, we'll meet another one of the underworld bosses over there or something? Yeah. Because we have been meeting the underworld bosses pretty pretty often. Yeah, I think it's Shanks. That's so you, you know. 
That's the yeah. Shanks movie. So, so, but do you think Shanks is going to Elbaf, cutting a part of the tree off from the Giants and just selling it like to the black market? Wow, they, just, they just give it to him. He's you the think brother. they give it to him? I think I think it's like one of those things. Like if Luffy asked, like the Fishman Island, they, their yeah. main expert was candy. They had no qualms of giving all of it to Luffy, even at a detriment to Big Mom, you know, even when there's a counter source, right? Yeah. Like, Luffy goes to Island Island. It doesn't matter what there is. Hey, Sh- Shandora, take all the gold. Why not? And I don't know, but th- but a tree is so different, though. Like, I- I'd be like, yo, like, we grew this for, like, 100 years. Like, have you ever played um, Green Mama? Or Garden Mama, sorry. No, no. It's like the old Nintendo game and you just go around like planting trees. It's like that, dude, that takes a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I played, I played a uh, Farmville, Farmville way oh, back. Oh, I used to love Farm, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. man. Ah, part. I, Honestly, like one day, if me and you, if me or you ever hit it super rich, like I'm talking like buku bucks. Yeah. Would you ever want to start a farm with me? Oh yeah, I tell my wife that all the time. Oh She's my like, god, me too. She doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, oh that's my shit. god, dude. I, dude. I, that's what I'm saying. I think every guy in the world, if they could, if they could live comfortably and have everything they want, they would live on a farm. I don't know about every guy, but like, I maybe not every do guy. Know that the every guy who dreams of this probably gets resistance from their wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe not like a farm farm where you like you know you're, you're doing it like you know 15 hours a day waking up at the crack of dawn but like yeah. maybe just like a small like really nice garden i, I like guess that's a better way to put it farm you know yeah like yeah I yeah, yeah. In myself like i have internet not like and yeah. like like i'm not being subsidized by the government type of farm where it's like a huge like yeah. family conglomerate and, operation and we can grow things for fun it's not for survival like like maybe one day you want to grow a pineapple and then i hit you with a melon and then we come together and we we crossbreed and it's like yeah. a pine melon yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i tried that with um some of my mom's plants growing up but she also welcomed it she's like yeah he's learning my mom actually did that to a tree she she put a uh, uh, there was a dying tree in our yeah. front yard um and like i i told my uh, so this this is a longer story but i was telling my dad <laughs> which trees were going to fall down if we didn't cut them um because like the storm and so like we cut down all these trees and there was one tree that was dying i was like we should cut this one but it was very hard to cut but we should do it and my mom said no i got it and then she, like uh, like Six months later, it's alive. It's it's back, and it's also growing grapes. So what she did was she put a grape, like she put like some kind of berry thing on it, and the berries started growing off of the wood, and then that somehow reinvigorated the tr- entire tree. And so the tree, yeah. And now we're, she just she like comes out and she's like, hey, do you want to have some grapes? I'm like, not from this like corpse ass zombie ass grapes. Like, I don't know what this is. And my mom just like, oh, well, you're lost. And she started eating from the thing. I'm like, oh, that's just, that's just crazy. But, but yeah, yeah, I would definitely be down to crossbreed some pineapple melons, you know? Yeah, no, my only experience with crossbreeding is just when I, I used to kill a lot of ants when I was a kid. Uh-huh. So I used to, I used to take a lot of toothpicks and I remember stabbing through an ant and then on the other end, I would stab it through a spider to see if it would work. Uh-huh. Like, the, like the human centipede, but just like a, the ant spider centipede instead. Uh-huh. It's it didn't like, work. They, they were already like, dead. The comments already like Par's backstory and it's like the angel emoji and like happy. It's thing. not and angel it's emoji. Skull, skull, skull. Your mom's <laughs> over here working at like unit, unit 712 or something. <laughs> She's over here crossbreeding plants. I think the tree and the grapes are happy, okay? I'd like to think so. I just, you know, I do regret not trying one of the berries, but but at the end of the day, I think I was valid to be a little worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, like, you open your basement one day, and then you see a bunch of, like, berry people, like, please let me out. <laughs> what would you do in that in that instance? Like, let, let's say, what like... You, what would I do if I found berry people? <laughs> what kind of hypothetical <laughs> is this? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, imagine this, right? Um, imagine we're brothers, right? We have the same mom, hypothetical mom. We, we have, her name is um, Matilda. Matilda, yes. Uh-huh. I, I was gonna go for like a Russian name, but yeah, yeah. Her, her name is Matilda. Matilda's kind of Russian, isn't it? Not? It's kind of. It's not yeah. like fully what Russian. What did you want, Olga? Did you? What did you want? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was gonna go over like Svetlana or something. You know, I sorry. 
Okay. <laughs> I just woke sure. up. Okay, my my accent's it's it's killing me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So we go to our mom, uh, Sletvana's, uh, you know, basement. Uh -huh. And then we open the door. There's like a bunch of locks on it, but our mom's she's away. She, she's she's gone for the next 24 hours. So me and you, we break all four locks, all four padlocks, and then we see bury people down there. It's uh -huh. like it's like a guy like Shanks, right? He uh, he's missing an arm, but our mom implanted some berry seeds in his arm, and now he's growing vines out of it. Yeah. And then he's like, "Please kill me. Please get me out of here. I can't. I can't do this anymore." I've been locked here for 15 years. What would you do? Um, um, or like, can they produce fruits? Let's or say, okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's make it twisted. Um, so every day for does for like does dinner, our mom would make us berry pie oh made, my God. <laughs> made from the berries from the people in the basement. Yo, this is a horror story. We should, t we should, this is, this is like a, well, not. I was gonna say triple A title, like it's a video game. This is a this is a box office shocker. You know, like nobody expected this movie. To <laughs> nobody be expects it. <laughs> this is great. This there's so much like, oh, oh man, the emotional trauma. These people have been feeding me for years. So did it at least taste good? Does it taste fine, or is it like devil fruits? Or devil fruits taste gross? It tastes good. Tastes good. So what would you do though? Like, would you would you let them go? um you know what okay we go we're going we're going uh <sighs> um are they kids are they kids or are they like i don't even know what that makes it better i was gonna say okay okay this is this is a messed up hypothetical and and i don't like the position you put me in but i think the right answer is you just put the padlock back on oh you didn't see anything huh yeah, you kind of just, you just, I don't know. Like, because then what? Like, you free them. But, like, your mom turned these people into, like, she turned them into, like, so what's stopping that from happening to you? Because she loves us. Oh. So if you have no, but, like, but then your mom goes to prison, right? If you, like, expose this. Okay, let's say, like, this is the best mom ever. Like she, uh -huh. she's, uh, she's helped us time and time again. Yeah. Like, like right before you release these guys, you have a flashback of when you fell from riding your bike uh -huh. and your mom rushed over and gave you a band aid. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the choice to expose them means that your mom can, would go to prison as, as a result. So like the, the Stockholm settles in. Uh, yeah, you know the good food. You remember how great the food is. <laughs> you start rubbing um, your stomach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you also have to recognize that, like, trying to convince people that your mom turned people into fruit people is like you're fighting in so many uphill battles. You lose your mom. You lose good food. That's some pretty core tenets to life. Good food, good mom. I think a lot of people would keep that, and then, and then then people will think you're delusional for the, the berry people, right? Like, oh, you created these berry people, and then you, you're going to get gaslit, too, on that way. So I think the right answer is, you know, um, I, I didn't see shit. I didn't see shit. I don't know. <laughs> but imagine this. Imagine this is like a Zoro Mihawk segment where you go up to... So your mom comes home, and then me and you are sitting in the basement with our arms folded with the berry guy and then we're like mom teach us the ways i teach just want to crossbreed i just want to point out all the times people say that i'm the one yapping in these in these calls but then also <laughs> they they think that we're like six drinks in like nine blunts down like on these podcasts like just for the record we are sober <laughs> like couldn't be we're more. sober all i do is drink coffee <laughs> yeah that's what i said because last episode we we cooked super hard and honestly i think it was like good like some of it was actually solid now it was goofy sure but but then when some people were like yo tell me how high you were i was like wait hold on hold on, hold on. me and Sai, we're we we're don't like, smoke yeah we're like nine months sober you know what i mean like this is cr at the crack of dawn uh you know early morning just straight up coffee and then we just hop on the call this is our true us 
Yeah. So, so I just wanted to point that out. To our, that. Our, our realist forms. So you would become the, the world's strongest crossbreeder, uh, crossbreeder though, right? That is wild. That is wild. Um, um, I thought you were going to say our truest forms and then segue back to the chapter, but we, we keep it moving. Um, oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, we see the giants and they're destroying some marine ships. Uh-huh. And it's pretty cool, but like, if I was a Marine, I'd be so upset. I, I'd probably hold like a grudge against the Giants for the rest of my life if these guys beat me up. Really? Like, I feel like it would make sense because like when you think about it, they're shooting arrows the size of your ship, no? Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I don't like arrows, man. What? Why don't you like arrows? So <laughs> arrows? growing up, I've never oh, liked no. arrows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> why did you, you do that? Wait, what? What's wrong with that? We just went from stun lock to stun lock and you hit us with the most generic opening. So back in my day, when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. I never liked arrows, man. I think arrows are so it. lame. I think I would like the bow and arrows and I, the, the, the swords are fine because I'm, I'm a sword guy. But I wish they had a better design or like a unique design. Like maybe they had some runes in it. Maybe have like a weird magic power to it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be sick. But right now it's just the regular bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, it would be cool if Oda introduced something like that here, because again, it's like, like what the the land, the planet fall happened, like the all this black lightning, and then it is interesting that like we see the giants just casually afterwards just walk in towards the middle. You know what I mean? Like they're not even, do they even? Yeah, they don't even have a dialogue right there. Oh yeah, just, Dorian Brogy. Yeah, and then the giants behind them, they just they see the lightning. And they're just walking. They're not even running. They're casual. I think they're the most casual characters on Egghead, period, you know? Yeah. Like, the only thing more casual was Luffy eating at the microwave in the middle of the, the raid. But, like, you know, the Giants not having any, uh, 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 what's it called? Um, is it priority? No. Urgency. Not having any urgency in this moment is kind of like how hard are they gonna cook and like yeah we get a notion of it at the end but like how long does that keep up you know what i mean this is some crazy behavior even yeah Luch in this chapter is just like rodan or zoro aren't you aren't you interested in this hockey and then like that meanwhile we cut to the giants are like it's a normal saturday for me you know like yeah it's, it's kind of wild like you know, it. I do agree. Like, how far are Dory and Brogy really gonna go in this fight? And then not just them, but like the the two giants behind them. It's like, are they gonna cook too? Like, yeah. are all the Gorosei done for? Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, how strong are these dudes? It's it, it's one thing for them to baseline fodderize the Buster call because for them it was just a backstroke in their in their kingdom. Like, oh yeah, the ship wood was in the way, but it's not Adam Wood, right? They just walked through. But it's another thing to like <laughs> not the Adam Wood scaling. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it but it's a completely other thing, right? Because we know Adam Wood isn't uh invincible. It's not completely indestructible. I like to but imagine if Dorian Broggy used a uh, Hakuoku sovereignty on an Adam Wood ship, it would just survive. <laughs> imagine yeah, the Pug yeah. Victoria, it's just still standing afterwards. Yeah, a ship right crazy. at the level of Frankie and the Frankie family can cut Adam Wood to make the Thousand Sunny, but not the giant's Hokoku sovereignty. And um, uh, don't forget, no swordsman can cut can cut Adam Wood either. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's too powerful. Yeah. Um. And and but like it's a completely other thing for them to experience the conquerors or whatever black lightning behind them or in front of them and just keep it moving. Like the years, giants like completely ignoring it and hitting the ships and then the other ones are just walking towards it no dialogue nothing like it's kind of like luffy zoro and jimbei um um and sanji sit with Sa yeah sanji was there all sitting on the coast looking at green bull you know what i mean oh and yeah it's like that kind of a thing it's like damn like we know that luffy could like yeah all of them if they all group together easily could take down an admiral if you added up all of them sure but now it's it's at a point where it's like yeah luffy probably individually wasn't even worried about green bull right after what we've seen with kizaru and that's the energy we're getting here where they just see that like, no dude do, do, if you look at brogy he has those um that little line on the top right of him 
that mm-hmm. shows that he's like smiling and possibly laughing like they're having yeah. fun like these yeah. guys are kids on a vacation it, it's me and you going to our mom's basement okay okay in the <laughs> hypothetical or in the good in the good timeline <laughs> uh, I, I mean isn't that the good timeline i don't no, i don't think so i don't think but, that but yeah like like these guys are like kids on a vacation like they're having fun they're just going to the middle they see the black lightning you know, they, they can sense what 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 when when Saturn showed up, Jimbei said, Yo, this is an ominous presence. We have yeah. we have that times five, and these guys are chilling. Yeah. It's like, okay, okay. And I thought that I was like that. It's not even dialogue. I thought that was so interesting because it's like, does that mean um uh like they've experienced like this is a summoning circle thing? Like they know it's a summoning circle, like they've experienced that, or like people on on Elbaf are just out here displaying what the Gorosei are doing like casually like to have no dialogue from them either Oda's like hiding it but then he adds a layer to it like you said he's laughing it, it's a whole different thing of Oda's hiding I... the character like hmm. telling us information when you have the character just walking up laughing like that's but, but, but here's the thing you have to remember what saul said back in ohara these guys are savages Savage. all they care about is war like what if they see the black lightning and they're like yo we're gonna fight like this is this is great like they're, they're laughing at each other like yo like i've never seen black lightning this crazy like i've never felt a weird presence we gotta go fight and then plus the sun god is there like there's so many things to look forward to this could be like christmas for them but, but you know they're, like the they're welcome to the center and they're like happy as hell that's the other thing because like I I would expect them to have urgency and run. Like whether they were excited, whether they were worried, they're not even running. They're casually walking, but bro. What if they are running, but since they're giants, to us it looks like they're walking. No, it, it's like a it, slow motion thing. In the above thing, we see giants in action. Look, they have more urgency shooting down marine ships with their giant bow and arrows. Like, each arrow takes out a ship, and they're out here hopping and jumping. Meanwhile, the other ones turn around looking at the Gorsei summoned up. Oh, they don't know, but, like, they can feel the hockey. Maybe they don't know what hockey is. Like, maybe that's why they can't. Maybe they hockey. don't know what hockey is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dorian like, Brogy don't know what hockey is. Oh. Um it's invisible to mm. them because like pre time skip luffy our perspective was he couldn't see it so like it's just invisible wait so all these lightnings they dude just we're see. so dumb we didn't think of the most obvious route what foxy huh he used the slow slow beam on them they're, they're just they're just moving in slow motion is that the most obvious answer <laughs> <laughs> i've gotten at least 50 comments about foxy being here on again par well you i wouldn't really? believe it no oh okay i was gonna I'm, say i'm sorry because i really wouldn't have believed it <laughs> no yeah yeah i'm sorry actually here let me go to my comment section let me let me type in foxy let me see if anybody actually brought him up recently no but the thing is you also have to have uh rosinante here too for the silence like or law like someone's keeping them quiet like one these are month ago famously the most noisy characters in the series like they cannot stop talking stop laughing stop spilling beans and they're quiet they're silent like, oda didn't even give us a dialogue bubble not even a sound effect to tell us like what's happening they're just yeah. casual the most casual like we got the sound effect of the giraffe swimming across the bicycle. like zah, 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 zah. <laughs> we don't have the giant say a peep it's crazy i love it it's good it, it's aura in a way yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not mad at it. I'm just confused by it. That's where I'm at. I was like, so, damn, we got nothing from them. One month ago, somebody made a joke comment saying that Fox is about to stop the Sunny with his slow, slow beam. And honestly, I think that's better than how the Sunny actually stopped. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so after the Giants do their little um, walk to Arlong Park, we cut over to the Holy Land, Marie Joie, and we see a giant summoning circle just in the middle of the room, black lightning coming out of it, and then we see a giant Den Den Mushi, which is probably Warkuri's because it has the mustache. Yeah. And it's just watching the Vegapunk video. And something that's kind of funny, too, is, uh, you know, last chapter we talked about it, but Vega, Vegapunk was like, hey, I want coffee, but the coffee yeah. will take 10 minutes. I guess we can't do it. And then three minutes later, they just invented Vega coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah, here we go. We, we solved it. With, and it's so many things here. Hard. With the just a drop, you can tra- could you imagine Insta Coffee like that in our world, where just a drop transforms water into like we have I that, would assume. right? Not just a drop. That would be like a like it's just a drop. We don't have anything like that. A we curate- have a, 
there's like a even, capsule that you drop in your water and you can like shake it and that's it but it's not exactly the same as a drop yeah and it's probably mm. not as good either you know what i mean i'm assuming yeah. Vega coffee is actually like really good like when when luffy and them had the microwave food they thought it was delicious right i'm imagining this is probably like maybe not the best coffee in the world maybe there's some coffee connoisseur out there is like huh you couldn't possibly manual labor is the best way to make coffee right and manual Vega labor <laughs> yeah oh the guy in the basement <laughs> no yo our mom's basement we could have him like cook up some coffee wait what's your favorite type of coffee then uh, i i'm not i'm not a i'm not a coffee connoisseur like that oh. i just yeah you know I'll, I'll admit it my we went to columbia me and my friend and he's a coffee he's been to coffee shops around the world i sat there and I felt like a child in chemistry class again. They brought out the craziest mechanisms to make my coffee. And it was like the the, the person, the barista brought out like th literally three and then taught me how to use one of them. And I was like, bro, I, I'm not built for this life. This is not me. I apologize for, for uh, insulting your establishment by coming in but like i kid you not it was three different contraptions that were more complicated than anything i used in chemistry class and and um so hey listen that person in the one piece world they they are probably still better than vega coffee but it is kind of cracked with just a drop on it look starbucks would kill starbucks might kill starbucks is watching the video call and, and trembling like oh my god this guy with just one drop dude. he's gonna put us out of business and he made this in what two minutes yeah two three minutes yeah dude give vegapunk five years to make coffee oh it'd be over it'd be over it'd be so over he'd have I don't know why I said five years but of, of of coffee nuts. because there's so much to the coffee world like we have to give some respect to them right coffee beans like listen like in our world there's people i think it's walk a flock of flame he he tried cat poop uh was it cat poop or rat poop i think it's cat it, it, poop it was coffee. cat poop yeah and it was poop. walk a flock of flame i remember that <laughs> yeah 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 so and he said it was delicious and this is the most expensive and rarest coffee in the world i i, I think it's in in tibet there's also rat poop coffee too as well they're, they're like it's not like rats they're like different rodents but Hey, listen, in our world, poop is is a del delicacy. And I would imagine Vegapunk would dabble in in, in some of that shit, you know? Um, and, but this, um, I think the most impressive thing about all of this is that Vegapunk did the un, like, w we were all trembling, we were all worried, but Vegapunk did something even more unprecedented, which was the fastest three minutes of any 10 minute timer, period. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he trailblazed it. Everyone was worried. Oh, no, 10 minutes. How many chapters is going to be? Vegapunk said, a coffee and a, and a few panels. What are you talking about, guys? Three minutes can go by easy if you have a genius on the other end of it, right? So, so I appreciated that. That was pretty solid. So it's been half a chapter since Vegapunk said he would put a 10-minute timer on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, so halfway into chapter 1109, he says nine and a half minutes. So you go oh. down half a chapter after that, two and a half minutes have passed then. Yeah. Because only seven yeah. minutes are left. Yeah. Dude, this is this is a fast timer. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not worried I love it. anymore. Yeah. So much has happened outside of that too. But you know what I, I when you were because like I haven't had the chance to like fully sit with this thing because I was editing a video right after. Uh but looking at this thing in reaction i was memeing because it's kind of funny that the summoning circle is there in the first place which does that mean that the summoning circle still on the ship that saturn like is it still glowing and there that's one part right because i guess the summoning circle is only active while the one on the other side is active but i was thinking well, what if the summoning circle stays and then a kainu because a kainu is technically there no he's at marriage yeah, and, like, he is there. We've seen him walk into this room. And so, like, and it's usually after, like, whatever thing, because they call him. And what if he just shows up and he just sees this? He's like, what? He's like, what is this? And he just comes out on the side, like, isekai kind of. Kind of. Oh, like, man. Oh. Yeah, he, he steps on the circle and he gets teleported over here. Yeah. That would be, be so wild. cursed. That would be insane. Oh, man. But if it doesn't work like that and it's just a summoning circle for them, I would like to imagine that when the Gorsei go home, I, I would want to see like other characters in the room waiting for them saying, hey, how did it go? Or maybe yeah. Emu like sitting there like, hmm, how was the mission, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, they fail, and Emu is like about to like slaughter all of them, because that'd be crazy, right? Oh yeah. Um, like, I mean, once we get later on to the chapter, we see the the portrayal Oda is giving, and it's like it's great, but there is a world where it's like. It's a little, it's a not a down step. It, it, when we get the context, it'll make more sense. But there is a world where Emu could just, like, be upset. Be upset that they were, like, Emu's watching the video. You know what I mean? And just, like, are you serious, guys? Like, this is, I leave you guys for one second. You guys choose to summon yourself over there? Why didn't you ask me? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> where was my decision in this? You guys Imagine Emu failed. tries to Lelucia Egghead Island, even with the Gorosei there. He's like, yeah, you guys have failed. Yeah, I mean, we don't even know, like, what, what, you know, but what, there is one thing that is um, debunked a little bit is the astral projection bodies remaining yes. on things. So, like, these that are, one's gone. It, it, these are the Gorosei, these are their bodies, unless, <laughs> I guess we could have, like, some weird fake out, but, like, it, it would be weird. It almost feels like Oda showed this panel specifically to debunk that, like, overarching idea around the Gorsei because he, it seems like Oda wants us to better understand the Gorsei. I don't, like, it's not, we're not in silhouette game anymore. He's straight up showing us, he's naming it, he's giving us abilities, he's doing yeah. it all. And so, you know, it, like, we have to ask ourselves, like, the big questions, like, okay, Oda pulled back the veal on the Gorsei, but we still have Dragon, we still have Emu, we still have like these characters that are in that veal for some reason. But the Gorosei are not, and the Gorosei's reveals are insane, and and so it is interesting. I wonder how Emu will receive all of this situation because that's their captain in a lot of ways. So we gotta see, we gotta see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for the Holy Knights now. Like like you said, we don't know what Dragon is. Uh, we don't know about Emu. And those are really the only characters we don't know much about yet. But the Holy Knights, man, we don't even we don't even know what they look like. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't know. True. This is true. Holy Knights do fit in that in that bubble. Um and it's a it's a cool bubble now. Like the bubble's getting cooler and cooler. But it's also I'm also worried at the same time. But it, it's like it's like 2008, you know, the financial crash bubble. It's a cool bubble. But when oh that God. bubble pops, man, we could be really disappointed in the Holy Knights, or or Oda builds them up. Like the thing is that there's so many ways against it. We see in this chapter how like the Straw Hats are in like a like a bubble too, where it's like we have too many and not a lot of them get focused and we're like grabbing at the breadcrumbs, like the crumblings of the thing, like, oh my God, Usopp did something. Oh my God, but it's like not, like everybody, I could have done it. You know what I mean? Like at that point. <laughs> I could have stopped a thousand Sunny too. Yeah, I mean like it's not like it's Nami could have done it. Brooke, uh, Brooke could have done it and stopped. And then, and then Chopper has three ways of doing it. Uh, Jinbei could have lifted the ship because Tom could lift ships. Like it's not, I'm not that worried. Um, yeah, and then we just gave it to Usopp, sure. But like my point is, is that when you get these bigger and bigger groups, some of the characters fall through the cracks. I don't want the Holy Knights to happen like that way. But the Toby Ropo, right? The Scabbards. These are the groups. The the nine groups, right? Like and and it's just kind of sad. I, I I'm praying. I'm praying we're in the good timeline for them. One and thing that's interesting about the Holy Knights. Or not the Holy Knights, uh, the Gorosei, is that when the Gorosei get teleported over here, I'm surprised it's just one big circle in the Holy Room and not yeah. like four mini circles. Because that, that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Because the flip side is like, did that mean that like when Saturn said, I'm going to summon you, they were like, ho, 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 and they had to yeah. jump in and like, hug each other. Quick, quick guys, yeah, huddle, huddle. We, yeah, we got to go. To, they had to throw out like the Ginyu Force type of thing. Like, you know. Like the, yeah, oh. they had to pose. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, also, oh, go ahead. Did, do you think that they, like, did they transform into their forms before coming through? Because it kind of feels like it. They showed up with their forms coming out. So that means that not only did they have to jump off of the couch, they're like, Power Rangers assemble, Dino Force activated. And then they just, like, turned into their thing. And then the summoning circle brought them through. And they're all just, like, looking at each other, you know? Like, they're like, yeah. I think I think they know how to time it perfectly. Like an animation uh -huh. cancel. So they, they started transforming while they were being summoned. Animation cancels crazy. Yeah, they, they just started halfway. 
so it, so it perfectly like falls in with this no that's wild they're they're pro players they're they're bringing out the challenger mechanics teleport mid teleport animation alt tr transformation cancel like that's crazy <laughs> yeah you know it so with, with them coming here though we do get confirmation that all of their circles have different numbers yes which i love that dude we got i i don't know why it's it's like a typical shonen thing but i love it when they number the bad guys we saw this at a uh, what alabasta with baroque works mm -hmm. like mr mm -hmm. five four three two one and zero so now we have it here with saturn being five uh itsumare number four hyoki number three bokotsu number two and then sandworm number one yeah do you think that correlates to strength or, or, or where, where do you fall with that one I think strength makes the most sense, but like at the end of the day, we don't even know what strength means for like Saturn isn't like when I think of Saturn and how I would rank him, strength isn't necessarily there. Like it's regenerating and whatever. So like, I don't know how, like, you know what, you know, what's actually accurate. It would be CP9 where it's like Saturn is Fukuroku. Fuku yeah. Fukuroku. Like the, the Doriki scale. Yeah, like he he gets he's a sandbag. Guy. We've said this so many times, and so was Fukuro. He was a uh, he was he got punched. He was the Dragon Ball Z punch scaler, except he would spit out the numbers instead of like a machine. And Saturn is a sandbag. And then we have Jabra, we have Khalifa, we have Kaku, we have uh, 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 Luchi, right? And it's like after saturn yeah there's a strength thing so like maybe it, it's related to that i guess it could be like it would be crazy if oda hit us with the doriki but like none of these like one flies one's a boar i don't even know what the value is of transforming into a yokai boar uh, the the horse is cool the skeleton horse is cool and then the sandworm if anything like it might be the the ratings is like the most useful i don't know <laughs> I don't yeah know. i don't even know like but jupiter i feel like there was a like jupiter it maybe is size of the planets maybe is mercury mercury's the smallest oh no saturn's huge so yeah saturn, saturn and jupiter are like close yeah yeah so i i don't even know because it would be what realistically it would be mercury venus mars saturn then jupiter if it was size i guess i don't know it's it is all interesting um I would imagine, yeah, like the the shonen trope is just power, power, right? And we do kind of see that reflected here, where it's like Sandworm is fighting Luffy, right? So Luffy always gets the strongest one. That's kind of yeah. falling in line here. And then, but then we have the Itsumare going up, right? And then the Bokotsu's technically on a course for Sanji if Sanji's meeting up with Bonnie and Frankie on the coast. Otherwise, Bokotsu's gonna meet up with bonnie and frankie which I, I don't know what that would mean um and we don't even know what the hokey's doing technically the hokey had... bro he's chilling i looked at him so the, so if you go down the chapter when we yeah. see uh saturn and jupiter attack you see the hokey just in the back chilling yeah and it's also funny geo tweeted and I, I i this got a good chuckle out of me this morning what do so you say Someone check on Saturn. Bro hasn't moved in like <laughs> since last chapter. And he's right. It's just Saturn hasn't said anything, hasn't moved. Hey, he's Everyone attacking else... though. He's attacking. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's going like this, but like his face is still like he's, he's Yeah, frozen. even his eyes, he's still like lobotomized. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't even acknowledged his friends since the coming. Do you think that they are talking telepathically this entire time? Yeah, I, I think they're in a group chat. It's either they're in a group chat or I do think that they have one of the best synergies I've seen in a minute. Yeah. But because <laughs> like, like... they literally show up and they know what to do, right? Like they like yeah. if, imagine they're not in the group chat. They're just they just showed up here and then boom, like what? Marcus flies up. Ho I, I guess Hyoki and um, Saturn don't do anything. But <laughs> Jupiter's attacking Luffy. Bakotsu's like running around killing the pacifista. It's like these guys, like they're on a mission. Like I'm actually impressed yeah. by how fast they're executing their job. Like they they know they have no time to waste. Yeah. So to I, I really where, love that aspect. 
where the Bakotsu, like uh, St. Venus, he surprised me. I laughed when he, like, because again, this is the oh, this is my favorite part. He show they all show up in their form, and the skeleton horse goes, nay, and that's their war cry. Not the bird, not the, the serpent bird, not the demonic worm, not the boar. We don't even give a roll to the boar, which is the, the boar is supposed to be making like a war cry sound, I'm pretty sure, like warthogs and stuff like that. And his name but, is Warkity. Come on. Yeah, come on. But we give it to the horse. He goes, nay, and that's terrifying, sure, right? But then he just beelines. He just starts running. No no words, nothing, no conversation, just into the forest. And, and that's the wildest part. He just beelines to Kuma. And then I was like, oh, sh this makes sense. He's so efficient, right? Like, the, the Kumas, the Pacifistas were a, a liability, an asset that needs to be, like, repoed and, and frozen from Vegapunk. And he's the finance guy, and he's supposed to be doing that. That was what the Marines were like, oh, us hitting our own tools. That's a that's a, a dent in our pockets. Our, our banks, our b bank account is hurting after every Pacifista is getting slammed, right? And so he takes it upon him. No words, nothing. He just runs and does it. I'm like, okay, I like this. This is is great and like you said then we have itsumare no words just dive bomb straight into the thing nobody told him about like what this barrier does or how it works because remember saturn showed up and he was asking kazar like do you think you can go through this thing like that's what this is right but remember he itsumare is the agriculture guy at least saturn's the man of science so the agriculture guy just doesn't ask questions he's like barrier i'm gonna run straight through it guys no wait is marcus that. mars agriculture i thought that was jupiter Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Mars? Mars is environment. Environment. Oh, so maybe maybe Laser Dome fits into his, you know, his environment. In... Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know oh, what? Oh, I'll... maybe we get the Marcus Mars flashback, and he grew up in a Laser Dome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he, like he. he technically, the Laser Dome is a soft uh, bird cage, right? Yeah. And that was kind of my head cannon was like. He's going up there and he's going to have a bird cage because Doflamingo's bird cage was the one it, it was able to lock in signals. So Denon Mushis couldn't call in or out of the bird cage. So if we have a bird going up there and if he had a bird cage ability and he wanted to stop the the transmission from going out and they assumed it was from Labo Face, he's the perfect man for it. And this could be great. But, you know, you know, he he again, his his observation hockey told him, I need to go up to the sky and just get straight into Yo. the... <laughs> Dude, the we, we kind of skipped over it too, but uh, design-wise, so so two mm -hmm. things, design-wise and then like the whole thing with like devil fruits, demon forms, whatever, yeah. yeah, but yeah, design-wise, yeah. how, how do you feel about them? Like, who's your favorite? Who's your least favorite? Like, like how do you feel about these guys? Uh, favorite is Bakotsu. Uh, I think second slash easily could go up is the sandworm because I just like the idea of it. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it ties to that agriculture thing because he's Jupiter and that's the, the worm agriculture, that kind of stuff. Um, and then it would have to be Itsumare. And then, you know, this is slanderous, but I'm going to give it to Hoki over Saturn because I'm just disappointed. Really? C doesn't even have webs, dude. Can we get once we get webs, I'll live. But, lift but Hokey's just a boar. And he's hasn't disappointed me yet. Because he hasn't <laughs> done anything. He's the safest Gorosei member. He's just not doing a single thing. Saturn showing up in 1095 or whatever chapter it was is more impressive than what I'm looking at in this chapter. Like he declined in the thing. He's a yes, he's the ox demon. There's no, yeah, like Technically, there's no spider in the name, but there's spider in the Ushi Oni thing. And so we're giving him a spider. Where's the webs? With Where's the bull stuff? He hasn't even charged anyone. He hasn't even done bull things. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's just, like, I don't even know what animal he is at this point. Spiders don't do this either. Like, he, it's just a weird thing. He's more like Wanze at this point. Wanze was using ramen and doing the same things. Honestly, more impressively so, because it was from his nose. Like, he had to eat the ramen and shoot it out of his nose to control it. And he made it a battle mecha out of ramen. Saturn's out here, like, I don't even know. It's, he, I, he's lower than Wanze in impressiveness. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on. I, I, I think I'd agree with you for the most part, though. Yeah, yeah, um, for me, I think Itsumaru would be number one. Mm. Uh, Sandworm would be number two. I'd probably put 
Bokotsu number three and then Saturn number four. But it's hard. I, I, I kind of want to give Saturn number three because I, I don't really care too much for the horse design. But but seeing the hybrid form really sold me, though. What if it is decaying flesh on his on the horse? Like it's it's like melted because when you look at him transforming back into Gandhi, it looks like that skin just turns into his face, you know? So like would that add to it if it's like a flaming, decaying zombie like horse thing? Would that raise it up? It depends on the skin color. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what skin color would you prefer? Human flesh. Because when I imagine a zombie horse, I think of like green or like rotten flesh from like a classic zombie. Oh. So if it's green or something like that, I wouldn't like it. Th that's why I prefer if it was cloth because it could be red. Even human oh, skin, right. I think it's still gross. Like no matter what color it is. So I guess it could I, be black. Because it reminds me of... um. So this, so this is a random tangent, but uh -huh. have you ever watched like a uh, Jenny, the teenage robot or um, Teen Titans even? Yeah, both. Yeah. They're so both in both good. of those shows, there's like an episode where in one Jenny wants to become a human. So like they make this human skin for her to put on. And I hated that. And then same for Teen Titans where Cyborg wanted his face back. So he put on fake skin. And in both uh -huh. of those shows, there's like a scene where like their skin melts off. And I think it's really gross looking. So uh -huh. I, I'm not a big fan of de decaying flesh. So that's why I, I would prefer if this was just like red cloth, like horse armor. Mm -hmm. And then even like classic decay, decaying flesh where it's green. I hate that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like the only way I would really like Bokotsu's like clothy design is if it was red. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like, I don't like the decaying flesh. I think it's, uh, I don't know. If gr I, I'd say it's more gross looking than anything. It's not like unsettling. It's just gross. You know what I just realized? The horse has hair, too. But Gandhi does not have hair. So that's kind of funny that, like, in his hybrid form, he has, like, a beautiful mane. And it's, like, He's a in his prime. Horse. Yeah, like, technically, he could always be in hybrid form and just have his hair. Like, have, like, long, luscious hair while he's in Gandhi form. That'd be crazy if that was, like... Like, you know how we say, like, Zoro with the bandanas, the top, like, it's like Ash Ketchum turning his hat around. Like, maybe Gandhi's the strongest when he's in his human form, but just has horse hair. Be now that, if you look at it, all of the Gorsei have hair except for Jupiter in their forms. I, I don't know if True. that's hair on the back of Hokey, but it, it, it kind of looks like it. Also, his name's Hyoki. I keep on saying Hokey, like the Hokey Pokey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Hyoki? Yeah. Ah, yeah, that is interesting. They all do. Yeah, except for the sandworm. Maybe he does have hair and it's just like small, you know, like worms, mm. I think, have small hairs on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, little feelers. So maybe maybe that's why, because Jupiter has lots of hair, right? And no, no, Jupiter is Sanji's dad. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Sanji's dad, it'd be funny if we see, like, he has, like, a goatee or something like that. Like, he still looks like Sanji's... That's the weird thing, right? It's, like, like Saturn is in his, like, newest form, but we can still tell it's Saturn, right? But none of the other transformations, you can tell who it is, and that's kind of weird to me, you know what I mean? Because then it's like, wait, does Saturn have a full transformation? And we just It could be, like, a Black Maria thing, where Black Maria is supposed to look like a full spider, but apparently she, like, modified her fruit to, like, change her appearance. Maybe Saturn's the same way, where, like, he's like, hey, I don't like looking like a giant spider, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna retain some of my humanity. Uh, I'll keep well, 5%. Thing, I think Black Maria never went into her full thing, but it was because her hybrid form, she was like, like, I think the nuance is, like, Chopper can use his fruit different ways, and so it's like, yeah. she used a drug to force her hybrid form to look in a different way. Yeah. But that also just implies that she's as bad at her devil fruit, too, because, like, Queen was out here doing some crazy stuff with his devil fruit, and yeah, he, like, modified himself. But Chopper, you know, he doesn't need to use the rumble balls anymore, and he can transform differently. But, like, I think the nuance was, Black Maria thought the full form was super ugly, so she couldn't, she never transform that and she wanted to use the drug to stay in a beautiful hybrid form which fair we i, I prefer Respect. what we got that that we did but yeah like like the itsumari for example the actual yokai has a human face and instead we get the bird face and i'm like but we have the human hair which is interesting or like the hair i don't know what we're getting honestly good designs to be honest yeah it's all cool but then i'm like how do we get a hybrid worm 
Like, what is that? That's cursed, right? Or is this the hybrid? Oh, dude? what if it's like Orochimaru, where the minute Jupiter goes hybrid, like another head pops out from inside the mouth, like his real head. I think that'll be, I think that'll be so sick. I can see that actually, like the tongue. There's a, there's a yokai like that. I, I don't know the name of it, where it's like a serpent. And then yeah. inside the serpent is like a human head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'd be kind of sick. Yeah. No, not I'm, like Jupiter's a, a, a yokai, but you know, it, it could be a nice twist. Yeah. And the thing is like, we see what hybrid looks like from the Bokotsu. We see multiple forms. It's like the centaur and then he like, his head is transforming out, right? Like, and then we see the full form. So it it's interesting because then it's like Saturn maybe has one more transformation. Do you... If you were like a okay, I mean, assuming these guys are even Zoans, but um, if you were like a Zoan user, like if you had the Bakotsu fruit, for example, <laughs> do you think you'd be able to like spawn your head anywhere on the horse, or do you think it would have to be where Venus spawned it? I think you could be, you could uh have full. If you're good at your fruit, you can do whatever you want. That's okay. what I think. Yeah. Because I just imagine a scenario where. You know, so so he becomes a centaur in this chapter, right? And he's like skirting yeah. around doing his thing, and he's he's walking on air, which is crazy. Uh huh. He, he's essentially flying. Uh -huh. But I'm like, yo, like if he ever touches down on the ground, could he transform one of his legs into his bald head and then start like spinning around in circles? Yeah, That's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, I mean, like a King nice spin attack. Because he thought that that's how it worked. He was slingshotting his face. They turned into helicopters. Like, yeah. yeah why not? ice skating be bald cool. head what else is what else is uh useful about a bald head right like skating yeah on he could ground. be like yo like there's a reason why i'm bald and then he does like a crazy spin top attack yeah and then exactly I and like then that. we find out why he doesn't just grow himself hair right you want to know the most cursed thing about a centaur what it has two rib cages oh really yeah, because it has the horse body, so the rib cage is down here, and then also the human body, so there's two rib cages. That's kind of cool. I like rib cages, though. Yeah, I guess, you know. I think, I, have I told you about that? Person has their own, uh, like, you know, fetish, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I really haven't. like uh, the rib cage idea where, like, you would have a chair made out of rib cages so that it, it kind of, like, you know, encases you. It's like a constant hug. Uh, is that an idea? Whose idea was this? So I was reading a it's it's a Japanese thing called uh, the the human chair. Uh-huh. Where like some like there was like a serial killer. It's 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 fictional, I believe, but um Oh, okay. It, it was it was like a serial killer who like killed his victims and then stuffed their bones uh -huh. inside of a chair. Yeah. And then I I I took that and I was like, "Wow, like that's such a interesting idea. Like, you know yeah, what? A yeah. ribcage chair would go really hard cuz it would be like you're constantly being hugged. Just put some nice cushions on it. It would be uh -huh. sick." Yeah, it's, you know, famously said by a sane person and healthy, mentally stable. It's, <laughs> it is it is from a book. <laughs> it is from a book. Yeah, we but, should um, check the author on that one. Like, so, check his couches. <laughs> like, it's straight out of Japan. Um, so yeah, these don't seem to be devil fruit transformations. It looks like they're actual devils or demons or the progenitors, perhaps. Uh, yes. Where do you fall with this? Like, like, do you enjoy this? Do you, do you hate it? Because let me tell you, dude, I was, I was there for the spoilers, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were people who were in disbelief. They they could not believe this whatsoever. And hey. I understand it, right? Because it, this kind of uproots everything that we know. It's like, oh, like this entire series, we we've had Zoan Devil Fruits. The fact that they're real transformations, it, it's too crazy. Yeah. But I'm glad this is happening, and uh, I I believe it. Thank you, yeah. Oda. I mean, this real makes demons are sick. sense to me. Like flashback to pre Nika era. I was I have multiple videos saying that we would get characters that depict like top tier devil fruit powers, whether it's Zoan, even Logia, even Paramecia, and they wouldn't have devil fruits. And that yeah. was called Devil Seed Users. But then also I had a Zoro video that was saying that we would get characters uh, that would also, and Bokotsu is kind of showing it to us, like slashing without slashing, but like I know that that's like an alabasta thing, but what I was saying is like, like spiritual slashing type of things. And it kind of feels kind of similar to that because it seems like Bokotsu is using some kind of 
he's freezing the thing and that's like tied to the underworld stuff in my opinion because he's a skeleton brook using frozen thing i feel like there's too many connection points for that a specific ability being used um and and it is interesting and you know in that same video i was saying that like hey like zoro's out here using ichi gorilla and he's morphing his body with no devil fruit and we have other characters that are able to do similar things and it's like hey somewhere down the line uh oh oh and then a video before uh, kozuburo came out i was saying like i think that devil fruits would have wills in them and just like how swords have wills in them and then we got the swords having wills in them canonically from Kozuburo. And then later on from 1044, we got the, the, the Gorosei saying there's wills and devil fruits. And so that's where I'm kind of like, hey, you know, from the jump, I was saying like this to me doesn't feel like devil fruit. Um, if it were devil fruit, I wouldn't be mad. But now we have, yeah, like we can't ignore the the, the complete... Uh, uh, like off court, we're going off course from Oda's pattern of like, hey, when Blackbeard showed up, devil fruit names, straight up. That's what we got. And here we are there. We're getting everything. We see their full forms. Nothing's being hidden. And yet Oda doesn't give us the devil fruit names. So that I think it's kind of it's simple. They're not the devil fruits. They're the devil seeds. Or, you know, if you if you don't like that term, they're the progenitors. And that's what I felt like with Nika. It's like there was a there was a Nika that existed. Just like Kaido, there used to be a dragon that had its lineage factor extracted. And we know that that's a possibility because Momo's fruit exists. And somehow Vegapunk extracted the lineage factor from Kaido's devil fruit and got Momo's. Yeah, it's a different color. But it's like we we get we have gotten this concept like there's source material and then boom we have like the 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 scientific or magical or whatever route whether whatever whatever the devil fruit uh, uh, rationale is by the end of it because Wano calls it sorcery uh, Fishman Island calls it a curse whatever it is um, it would make sense to me that like hey. The Gorosei put out the propaganda about devil fruits. They're doing experiments about it. Um, so if they were the devil fruit users and they were like from the original like group of devil fruits, they would probably not need to experiment the way they would. They, they're uh, at least Saturn's depicting. So if they were the actual yokai and they're trying to study what the devil fruits are about and they're a little confused and you know they're like oh man it seems like the nika has been uh, uh running away from us and i guess it's because it's will right it, it feels like they don't know everything about Delfruits, fruits and so a lot of context clues led to this understanding now two chapters ago i believe it was where it was kind of when uh saturn transformed into this and it felt like the zone awakenings and impel down that it was kind of like okay maybe they are double fruits but this chapter i think completely 180 completely there's no doubt in my mind that they're probably just the original demons which i like a lot that's, that's yeah where I'm at. yeah it's yeah that's where i'm at now and i just went back to uh the recent chapter like when, when i talked about it i looked through the comments and there are a lot of comments that are saying that these are still just devil fruits yeah but um yeah. i like i was there too like i i started off when saturn first arrived saying that he's not a regular transformation i, I thought that this was something completely different and then I eventually came to, you know, like two chapters ago when we saw the impel down St. Saturn, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is probably a devil fruit. But yeah. now that we're here in this chapter, it's like I've, I've 180 like you and I'm, I'm like, yo, these are actual just demons. Yeah. And I don't blame people either because like yeah. I, to this day, that or first Zoro video, it's like one of my first theories. It, the thumbnail is natural Zoan. And the point of it is like, we're going to see characters that probably, you know, uh, e e e they don't need a devil fruit to do these crazy things. And this is way crazier than I even imagined at that time. Um, Cause I was just thinking tigers and gorillas and normal stuff, but like we're getting yokai. Um, and um, I thought that was crazy, but like you go back to that video, devil seed user, uh, devil fruits are training wheels for peak hockey. Like all those videos, it leads to some notion of this, if not directly this. And like, here's the other part of it too, because like some people are rational, uh, uh, rationalizing this as like, okay, they are the yokai and they ate a human fruit and they turned into humans. But I don't even think that's necessary either because that's a core like thing for yokai and monsters in general across the world is that 
like in the fiction we gave them human form so that they can trick and assimilate to humanity and that's how they merge whether it's jinns or whether it is japanese yokai a lot of them had just have human forms that are either to trick uh seduce what like what what have you with the, the way uh you know taking control of human sin that's kind of what it was is like they, they'd have human forms to take advantage of those things so these human forms could just be that you know and and even in like like um european lore it didn't even they, they, a lot of the monsters were and i say european lore because they're saints a lot uh, like they have the vatican stuff they have like a lot of roman ties so even like an arthurian legend king arthur uh a lot of their monsters shape-shifted it didn't even matter what it was it was just they just shape-shifted they could turn into any human um so it, i don't even think that they need a human fruit to show off what they could it's literally they could just be the yokai and, damn dude yeah it, it'd if, be simple as if that. that's the case and i i agree with you I, I i do believe that's the case too but just imagine saying hey i'm the hokey or hyoki and i'm gonna transform into a bald dude with the yeah, big mustache know. like like that that would be the interesting part because um there like this is a complete uh uh separation but i know a lot of people have like the kaguya idea with emu and not that emu is kaguya but like the story of kaguya kaguya princess kaguya being one of the like foundational stories folks lores from japan uh Princess Kaguya had suitors, and a lot of people have a theory that like the Gorosei are suitors for Emu, but which is like really weird at this point if we think Emu's a kid and maybe even a dude, and like now we have these old men. But like, hey, even that kind of fits with like the church and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys read about the the church and their scandals, but uh, old men and little boys in the same after school programs maybe not the best idea uh, at this point. But but you know the overarching point is. Um, the Gorsei have made questionable decisions in the past. I wouldn't put it past their weird forms, right? Maybe they're they're looking like 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 if Emu isn't the original, but like a child of the Nerona family. Maybe that's the case for all of them, right? Nusajuro, Juro, I think means like or no, Jew Peter's tenth. No, Nusajuro is also like tenth son or something like that, right? Something I think it's something like something son, not not the oldest son, but like one of the younger sons or something like that i feel like that was what some people said yeah i'm not exactly too sure i did nasi juro lore like a long time ago but it's yeah. all past me now yeah 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 out um you know. I, as far as the gorosei though like i I, th I do think it's really cool how the celestial dragons see themselves as gods but they have mm -hmm. these devil fruits or not devil yeah. fruits but devil forms and then mm -hmm. somebody pointed out too where like it's the same thing that could be said for nika and even sengoku because they're gods but they're devil fruits yeah like yeah. yeah i like i like how that's like all flipped around yeah like uh, but like this oh, could yeah. also go back to like there's a short i made um saying like it could be that they have the blessings of emu yeah. emu being god and so like their blessings are ironic like instead of being cursed with devil fruits they're blessed with these forms and these are like they're happy about it which is like if it like if you go back to like khalifa and kaku when they tasted their or had their fruit and they were trying to figure out what their powers was right they were individually happy i think kaku likes giraffes and khalifa was attuned to her power in the first place and really knew how to use the soap stuff right but imagine they got something cursed like this i think most humans would be like what the hell am i i'm a monster it'll be like, so Momo. sick no dude come on i mean momo even even if i was the hyoki i, I think i'd be kind of cool with that I think the only character like Momo, right? When Momo ate his uh, the dragon fruit, he was upset because he ate the fruit of his father's murder. He basically became his entire country's like uh, oppressor, dictator, murderer, like thing like that. And so now he was that symbol, but pink, which is, you know, take that how you will. So maybe Momo would eat one of these and like, oh, at least I'm not looking like Kaido, right? But honestly that fruit did wonders for for momo in the grand scheme of things uh but yeah with the with the 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 portrayal here i do think it is crazy like on the surface level i think most people react to this and go like wow we're not not silhouettes this is real like we have the gorsi oda named them showed them they're doing things like we are in the last saga and this is the first arc and we already have the gorsi we don't have any we don't have we don't have emu not even the closest we don't even know what emu looks like just an eyeball 
maybe a glove if you take the anime for for what it is and then uh dragon we we don't even know we don't even know what the tattoo is about but we have all of the forms and it was kind of bittersweet in a little in a in a weird way i i remember telling you i forget if it was on stream or off stream but um the way oda showed them it's not the same level as big mom and kaido because big mom and kaido had like individual terrifying introductions big mom like her saliva was disintegrating things and she was eating people and then we get into her island she's like taking people's souls and in this like twisted thing she ate her mom like crazy stuff and sure that was the backstory but like what i'm saying is the introduction was like heavy right and same thing with kaido we had an individual introduction prior all that stuff whereas here we're kind of getting more of a commander introduction where we get one commander like cracker or jack the weakest commander if saturn's number five we're getting the weakest zgorosei and then later on we get the toby ropo in full showing with the sweet commanders in full showing we get the calamities in full showing they just group up and we see like the title cards and that's what we get here where it's like all of them just got a showing out together and they're getting like a commander feel and it makes emu feel even scarier but it also worries me a little bit about the gorse because it's like if that's the route well like besides the calamities you know i don't know if anyone's scoffing at the toby ropo and the reason why i'm saying that is because if it's the same like separation where emu's kaido the Gorosei are the calamities. Well, nobody's nobody's memeing on King like that. Yeah, like his brain knowledge or whatever. But like, at the end of the day, he's still terrifying. But below them is the Toby Ropo. And below the Gorosei is also a group of nine, the Holy Knights. And that's where I'm on the fence of. And I think we did talk about this where it's like, um, where it could be like at least if we're getting crazy demons for the Gorosei, and for the calamities, it's like we got crazy dinosaurs, and then the Toby Ropo were like less crazy dinosaurs. They got like normal stuff. That might be the case with the Gorosei, where it's like at least we could maybe extrapolate. Yeah, Emu's gonna be insane, insane uh, uh, yokai, right? Like if the dinosaurs led to a dragon, then these yokai lead to crazy Emu. But then on the flip side, that means that the Holy Knights might be modeled after like regular not regular but like like common com lesser demons i think yeah and, and like on stream we were like i think you said like goat man and i was just like oh, yeah, i don't know i don't know about goat man but like you know there's some other ones but i really like that idea and we kind of get that with the that one holy knight guy with like the the mask we don't know if it's a mask but he has like the jackal head and that's kind of yokai or like american monster esque you know so there, there's a there's an interesting uh, pocket i just hope that the holy knights don't go the way of like the toby ropo and the scabbards right i so. don't think they will i don't even think the gorosei will either i i feel like um while i do agree like their initial showing here it, it seems very uh yonko commander-esque yeah or tobo ropey esque uh tobo i i do Ropey is yeah crazy tobo ropey. Disrespect, yo. Yeah, you know how it is um <laughs> I, I I think I think they they have a way better initial portrayal than all those groups. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the way of showing in like each group. It's like going from Doflamingo to then Katakuri to then King, right? Yeah. Like, like Katakuri's showing was he flicked a jelly bean and was like was like, huh? How did he dodge it? Right? Whereas like yeah. next we go to King and his first thing is kicking Big Mom ship twice off the thing. And that's wild, right? That's like insane. And like Saturn's I mean it wouldn't be comparable to say Saturn here because it'd be Cracker. Cracker had a better showing against Luffy than Saturn did against Luffy in my opinion. And that's where I'm kinda like Ugh. but at least at least at least the Bakotsu, at least Saint Saint Venus is doing some crazy stuff, right? He's the only one we can really say that for because the other ones kind of do stuff, but they're not, like, insane. Like, Bonnie made it through the barrier. So the Itsumari making it through the barrier is no-brainer. If Bonnie can, the Itsumari shouldn't even be phased, right? Um, yeah. 
it might even be problematic to see that Itsumare have to like regenerate from going through it because Bonnie made it through co completely fine. No issue. And it's just Bonnie. It's a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> like at the end of the day, the Itsumare needs to go through with no scar, right? And then also with the sandworm, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to get there, but a lot of people made the thing. It's like, hey, the sandworm got the same treatment as the, the island eater and nobody scales up the island eater. So it's like, ah, yeah, they're getting a good showing, but like not. Nah not like unfettered you know what i mean it's kind of there's a besides saint venus there's not like even in this chapter it's kind of it's a little topsy-turvy a little topsy-turvy they're cool though don't get me wrong they're cool yeah they're, yeah Still i'd say all the gorsi are really cool i really like their showing here except for probably hill cube because we just don't see anything yeah and saturn because he hasn't landed a blow yet but everybody else man they're looking pretty sick yeah but here's the thing you know, uh -huh. the last thing I want to compare with the Toby Ropo and these guys, when the Toby Ropo first appeared, they weren't uh -huh. really doing much, bro. Like, let me tell you, Drake was over here getting his 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 shit kicked in by Queen. Uh, I, who was it? It was Queen and um, who's who? They were the ones who beat Drake. Sasuke got tied to a tree. Uh, like Black Maria was drinking with Kaido. Like, they did nothing on this level where, you know, they're over here slashing Pacifista, running through a barrier, like. I, I I'd say these guys are looking pretty solid, but are going back to the whole though, what's up Saturn's chapters prior to who's Saturn? Because <laughs> I would argue who's that Saturn? Saturn alone is more embarrassing than all of what you said of the Toby Ropo because because like my man got touched by everybody. My man has so little, instills so little fear that five of him don't even make the gore, uh, the, the, the giants run. You know what I mean? Like the Toby Ropo, I don't know. They, at least they- No. They like, come on. Like, no, the, no, no, no. Like, like, yes, I agree. I, Saturn I, hasn't had the best showing, but I still think it's better than the Toby Ropo. But I think the, the problem I, with that is that we didn't expect that much from the Toby Ropo. Right. Right, and that where Saturn we do that. That's why it's different. That, that's why it's different. That's why it's worse because, like I just said, it, it we expected more, but not only is that expectation not met, and our coping mechanism is, I hope the other four Gora say are good. I hope no, the no, other... no. But, but that's the thing though. Like, for it, okay, put put who's who in this situation. We'd be uh -huh. like, yo, who's who's doing crazy work? Like he's trying his best. But like, I think the problem is, is that for a Gorsei, like Saturn, we just expect a lot more. Like our bar is a lot higher. But if this was an average character, like a Toby Ropo guy, we would look at Saturn and be like, yo, he, you know, he did really good. He did good out on the field. I would argue that who's who versus Jinbei was more, was less embarrassing than Kuma versus Saturn. Where it's okay, like, okay, but here's the thing. Who's who, like, he didn't die, he but he lost race, that fight. Um, Saturn is at least still up and kicking. Yeah, like, because I, of the tags. I, I because agree of with the Saturn yes. slander because I, you know, I'll be the first one. It Saturn does not look good here, but I don't <laughs> think he looks that bad. You know, like I, on a scale of one to ten, he's yeah. like at a he's like at a three or four. But but that's Gorosei. Who's tax. who is like a a, a one? And, that's last saga attacks. That's Gorosei attacks. That's that's mythical. Not even Zoan. That's just mythical attacks. Like he, of course I, he should be showing up better like, than the we, we got to wait for the one v one for this guy. Like, like, how many 1v1s can he have? What do you mean? Well, <laughs> well we need a fight to the death part. We, we need, like, a you know, like, oh, the winner of the, 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 the central lobe of Egghead up. Island, Saturn loses. You know, uh, Jimbei wins. You know, something like that. Like, we need a full blown fight with Listen. this guy. We need to, like, put him down. You I, know, like, I've right now, it's just like little skirmishes here and there. I've never seen more of an open target than Vegapunk in the latter half of this arc. You, like, I'm saying a Yonko, his commanders, they're defending him. And I still think I could have walked up to Vegapunk and killed him. And somehow Saturn failed that. He couldn't even kill him with a giant, like his stab wound went, is his entire body. You know what I mean? And it still needed Kazar to clean that up. That's to be fair, Vegapunk That's was going to die. You know, that that kill, it killed Vegapunk. Oh, oh like the, so the attack killed was, Vegapunk. If it was, why didn't he take credit with the other Gorosei? Why did he push that on Kizaru? Why didn't he say, I stabbed him? I because he wants to make Kizaru look why good. Why didn't he use Venom? Why didn't he just put the... You brought that point up last week. Hey, you know? hey, hey. I, now, now, I'm on, now I'm on the defensive for Saturn. 
So the reason he didn't use Venom was because it wasn't ready yet. Oh yeah, he needs prep time for his <laughs> god needs, he, need, he needs prep time. <laughs> My god, he needs to he needs to get a stirring pot and shit and dip his toes manually. That's how the venom works. He's a yeah, witch. it's it's like the Chinese scorpions, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! I like listen. I know I'm sounding like a hater, but like it, 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 it I think it's valid that like, like the Gorosei are showing up and the Bogotsu did stuff, and that shouldn't be a W. You know what I mean? His W is running really fast and slicing robots and freezing them with hacks abilities. Like technically, can't Brook do that after time skip? Like Brook is not that weak either if he's fighting just Brooke, past no way Brooke could do this not maybe not all of them but like i would imagine Brooke can do you think Brooke can go pacif through and in, and tap the one pacifista pac one pacifista he could freeze okay Come one on. yeah 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 yeah. one one sure a, not 25 well, he, literally half of them are deactivated okay and that's the gores no world that i think like what we're saying right now is like Brooke facing off big mom no one thought that he would do that but he did and it's like at that point, it's like I, he shouldn't be like like these guys are showing up and doing things that like, yeah, Luffy could eat all of the pacifistas in one soup. He could just get really big and scoop them all up. Z are we worried that Zoro could do this? You know what I mean? Like Zoro could do this too. He couldn't freeze them, but like yeah, Zoro could beat the pacifista. Like it's but Brooke can't I think though. He could knock them out. I think Zoro is so strong that he could probably just like snap their necks like with the back of his sword you know like when he like what was it in whiskey peak was he using the back of his sword the whole time or is that the anime saying that i forget uh i don't know i feel like zora's strong enough where he could just knock them out like and put them out of commission that's how strong he is and so but like what i'm what saying is, but, but that doesn't that doesn't demean that bakotsu is pretty strong though okay he's pretty strong but uh, it, we're going back to like like the gorosei right is here and then like the, the toby ropo were here and the gorosei are having like similar portrayal is what i'm saying and it's not necessarily a bad thing but now i'm i am on the boat that maybe umu is insane right like if you were to create the disparity of like the calamities could all do you think queen king and jack could beat kaido no Right, and so like I'm, I'm enjoying that part. Maybe Emu dog walks them. Right, that's cool. I like that idea now. And then the other part is like, like at least the other, the other cope that people had for the Gorse were like, and I say cope a little rudely because I was coping just from a different angle. It was that these are all astral projections, but we now know that that's not the case. This is actually them too. And then they show up and one of them gets sliced in half and yeah, regeneration. And one of them shows up and gets beaten by every single person, punched through the wall, bleeding. Oh, if I wanted to dodge Bonnie, I would. And then like proceeds to get hit by every single person. Karen Devon walks up, loves taps him. He's like, what, why did you do that? And they leave, he misses Van Auger dodge. Like, hey, hey. Like I said, he's he's not he does he hasn't had the best portrayal, but it's not the worst. Yeah. It yeah. it could have been way worse. I have a question. Do you think What's up? okay, see I was thinking that there was a world before this chapter came out, they showed up in their human forms, and I was thinking, you know how Saturn has the force ability? Like he actually did stop Luffy for a moment, right? And he did stop Sanji and Frankie all together, all by himself. That was probably his greatest feat, was doing that. And then uh, thereafter, we never saw him do it ever again. When Katarina and Devon and Van Auger dodged, he should have used it there. But w I was thinking, like, what if all five of them, like, forced Luffy? Do you think they could lock him down like that? Because I feel like that might be more efficient of use of their power. Using the force. Using the force to hold down Luffy? That thing was incre That thing was crazy. It was holding down Sanji. Yeah, uh, but I don't know if that's just a, a Gyuki ability or not, though. Yeah, like I'm assuming that's just Gyuki related. You think so? You don't think that the rest of them have them? No, have it? because it's a part of like the the Ushioni lore. So, do you think that the transformation, not the the transportation circles? Do you think that's Saturn because science or whatever or because there's one circle do you think that that was just saturn if it was five separate ones do you think it was them i'm kind of just asking to see how to separate what we saw of saturn yeah to, to the rest of them and like it's weird because like i feel like the circles could be saturn but like this forest thing i feel like that's something they probably all have
Um, I nah. I, I think I think the circle is something they all have. I'm like mm -hmm. the opposite of you. I, I think the circle is something they all have, and then I think uh, the holding down part is just the Gyuki, since that has to do with his mythology. Yeah. It's, but, okay, so then when Saturn says, I'll summon you. Yeah. Like, th does, doesn't that mean that, like, they didn't do, like, he summoned them, right? Yeah. He made all the separate circles, and then in the room, it, was, it wasn't separate circles, so, like, can they all do it? I'm not against you, because I would like it if the Holy Knights, for example, could do their own summoning circles. I would like it if yeah. there's more magic. I've been, I've been saying that, right? But I also, it, it's weird with the context. It's like, he said, I'll summon you, instead of them them doing it themselves, right? So it's like... Do you think well, I mean, Saturn's thing? the one that's... Saturn's the one that's here, so I think he, yeah. he, like, you have to be summoned to a place. You can't just summon yourself to Egghead Island. You need, like, somebody there. To like, it, it's like a connection. Case, it's because he was close enough that he could do it. You don't think I, that like, like he could do it to any island? Like, cause then it's weird. No, I, because I, then, I think he can do it to any island. Yeah. So then that's what I'm saying. Like, would it, if all the Gorsei could do the transportation circles, then I would imagine that they could do, also go to any island. Cause I would imagine their power is better than Van Auger. Van Auger can. Well, okay, okay, okay. Well, well I, I'm saying that like Saturn is on the island. Yeah. The Gorsei are over here. So if you want to teleport here, you need somebody over there first. So but like Saturn it's a, it's a two-way thing. But Saturn trans transported himself to the egghead without anybody there. Oh, that okay. So in that regard, I I think it's like proximity based. I think proximity. you have to be close by. Yeah. And that th that's where I'm confused because then it's like Van Auger's ability. You know, Van Auger has the proximity thing where he was telling Kyrie, I like can't a, jump on island. Think island. of it like a Viego old. But Viego's all makes because he's he, like he's there's like a sacrifice, you know what I mean? Like that's you don't always different. need a sacrifice though. You can use the ult without the sacrifice. But don't you need to like have a point and click location, or can you? Oh, did they? I thought it, it's, like, it's 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 not it's not lock on. You can do it wherever. Ah, oh. like you can use it to like go over bushes and you know go over pit. Uh, I haven't played uh, enough to to know Viego League of Legends reference guys. The, you know, some of us old heads hear these new champion names. I mean, Viego is one of the older, newer ones, but uh, yeah, damn, damn. It is so, but, and, and, you know, going back to the whole, what we got from this chapter is really sick. I just want to know how Oda's going to divide it up because there's a world where the Holy Knights have everything, you know, like they have yeah. a portion of all of it. And I think that would be cool. Um, I do think that would be cool. And I don't think, like, the reason why, I like, the Force thing isn't weird for me to think that, that everyone has it is because, like, that could be, like, a higher tier of hockey. Like, it could be something like that where it's, like, Shanks can cancel people's observation hockey. You know what I mean? I would yeah. imagine that there's versions of that where it is, like, the Force. That It's not a secret that Oda loves Star Wars. So it's, like, can you use hockey in a, the way of the Force? Why not? Like, I don't see why at this point in the story we're gatekeeping that, but... You know, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I have high hopes. I have high hopes. Uh, not for Saturn, but for everybody else, and I'm excited. I'm I think excited. Saturn can shine really well, given the opponent. Like, put put Buggy in front of him, right? Put, like, a, a harmless he old man. He hit him first, bro. My man can't hit Like, think anything. about, uh, put, put, put Usopp in front of Saturn. Just, just anybody else Usopp, your least favorite straw hat and slash character of the entire series yes let's use that as a benchmark yeah there we go Saturn I'm, him. I'm glad you agree now yeah use him as a benchmark yeah you're right and if people how about this how about this how about this What's people up? how do you feel oh, oh this is gonna this is gonna get ready guys how do you feel about the people rationalizing that Usopp's fire bird is going to do something against Itsumade. If he's going to snipe down because like you said, I think you also brought up the Itsumade story yeah. is that it was taken down by a sniper. So yep. how do you feel about Usopp throwing out the firebird? Firebird, Itsumade, 1v1, Usopp is the Gorosei's uh maker. You know, how do you feel about that? God so... Usopp takes down the demon yokai. The minute we heard that uh, it was confirmed that Marcus Mars was a bird, I looked up a bunch of bird yokai. Itsumari was one of them. Yes. And I said, hey, like maybe there's a chance that good old Usopp goes against Marcus Mars. And I said that mano, mano. seriously. 
I I, I, don't, I don't think I said mono we mono. I think I roped somebody else into that too. Uh-huh. And, and you... then and then now that we have the chapter, I, I I said, hey, like Chopper, you know, uh Brooke, even Nami, Chop like uh like Rob and all of them, since they're like off like the Labo phase coast. Yeah. But I don't think that would be anytime soon. I feel like if Usopp were to shoot anything at the Itsumare, nothing would work. Yeah, I don't think it would do enough damage. Oh, or it would be like Saturn, where he takes the damage, but he just regenerates and he doesn't care. And and I think there's a really great specific example we can reference, which was the Toby Ropa, where Alti was just dog walking Usopp and Nami. Had Big Mom not shown up, one single Toby Ropa would have wiped out two of these members present. I would imagine if you like the Itsumare should have a crazier portrayal. Now, given Zoro and Jimbear are there, we don't know Zoro's, you know, uh, post uh, victory. Uh, uh, sorry, spoilers, guys. Uh, uh, Zoro's uh, situation after skinning his uh, opponent, but and wearing his coat, like what Twitter is saying. Uh, but um, you know, it's it's just crazy that like. People are are thinking like Usopp is gonna do something against this, and I, I I would love it, but like that would be awful for the Gorsei if like Usopp and Nami banded together and actually like deterred the Itsumari from anything because Alti didn't. Alti was running through them. U Usopp even tried to hit like Page One, and Page One just kind of like, huh? What are you trying to do, little ma little man? Funny and then, enough, like, Usopp ran. Speaking of uh, speaking of Page One. The attack that Usopp uses to stop the Sunny in this chapter is the exact same attack he used on page one that had no effect. Yeah, it, I, yeah, the bamboo shoots, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so... It works on fodder, but... But, you know, the Itsumare but, should not have the similar, like... It yeah. should be well above what we saw of... You know, if, if, if Usopp could not even graze ulti in page one... I don't understand how we can expect anything Usopp has at this moment. At, yeah, at this moment. Anything. But yeah, sure. End the story. After Elbaf, we give him Mjolnir. We give him every every tool. He becomes Batman. Just change him. Soja King, come back. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's Umani. But right now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, yeah, I think right Batman. now, um, a lot of the Straw Hats, if you're not the Monster Trio, you're just kind of underleveled right now. Yeah. And Jinbei. Like, Jinbei could probably hold off. Yeah. I, so, funny enough, I include Jinbei in the monster trio now. I just consider Luffy, like, an anomaly. He's just the yeah, Yonko. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a Yonko and his three uh, Yonko commanders, essentially. Yeah, okay, but who would be knocked out if Yamato joined in the monster trio? Who would be knocked out? Yeah. I don't think anybody would be knocked out. I think it would have to be, like, the monster quad at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quadrio. The yeah, I don't... I Like, Jinbei's... He's too strong... Sanji's too strong, Yamato's too strong. Like, I don't think any of them would get knocked out. And then Zoro is like the undisputed right hand. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, you know, yeah, it, he, he gets now. We, uh, you know, actually, I'll wait till we get to the Zoro part because I have, I have an addition yeah. to, to some Zoro fans. Um, so, for the Holy Knights, though, like, what monster designs are you like looking forward to if they do have like these mythical creature, um, cryptid designs? Because I, I am looking forward to. I've talked about this before, but I, I do think we'll get, like, Garling as a werewolf. Yeah, I love that. It was, uh, like, uh, on stream yesterday, like, um, th it's it's hard to cook with this chapter because this opened up a can of worms, literally. And, um, but I did really like the idea that, like, the Holy Knights have their own, like, mi like lesser demons forms and more popular ones and the easiest one is yeah like mihawk being a vampire that's like a day one like the moment we saw mihawk the way he was coming through in a coffin it's like that dude is somehow a vampire like i don't care what anybody says and it's like that that's a hive mind voice of all things kind of theory that i think anybody who's seen the series through and through is like, yeah, they've at least thought it one time, right? But then we get with the Shanks one, and I think you brought it up, was like um, the werewolf uh, thing, but then also the Garling having the moon thing. And on top of that, 
my favorite reason for that is because Oda in the SES said that this is what it would look like if you didn't cut his hair and it's a full moon. And so it could be like that was Oda's meme way of like showing what his full transformation is. When if Garland goes into werewolf form, he gets like a full moon like hairdo and he stays in werewolf form or something like that. Or he does something goofy where he like he makes the tips of his hair touch, which funny enough, when we got Garland's design, I did think I was like, huh, I wonder I wonder if that like he does something with the points. Like does he stab people with it? Like they could be useful. But Use never, it as an like, attack. Like Don Chin Jiao. It's or now it's gonna be a buff. It's gonna be Beppo's monster point. You know what I mean? It's gonna be the 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 Sulong. The in oh and then maybe they have Sulong. Werewolf Mink, like who knows? And Again, funnily enough, uh, one of my theories, it was that, well, it, you know, as far as the yokai go, it doesn't apply. But one of my theories was, and this is my latest Zoro video, um, was that these swordsmen probably were animals. Like, they, there's some kind of animal connection to them. I didn't apply shanks to it. I don't know if I, no, I didn't even have garling at that point in, in this theory. But I was saying that the West Blue is going to be really important. And I was like, that was when I had the Kuma, God Valley, God Valley is West Blue, like that, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, um, adding on to that theory. But the overarching point was like, yo, these insane swordsmen, the Oda might make them animal-like. And we have Cavendish as an example. We have Mihawk. We have Zoro. They all have some kind of crazy animal thing to the point where the Cavendish is, is his nickname is literally uh the slicing uh weasel like weasel and weasel and mink are basically the same like they're basic like they're the same animal essentially like they're they're cousins so it's like oda basically calling him the slicing mink and that's uh prior to the minx reveal but also we have other characters that get buffed up by the moon and it would be it'd be interesting if shanks has that lord that'd be that'd be kind of fun um but then i like uh thinking mihawk and shanks having the rivalry of Twilight, the werewolf versus vampire thing is just kind of funny. Because, you know, that is a reference Oda would make. Twilight was a huge franchise that made its uh, way around the world. So it wouldn't be it, an unheard of thing for him to, like, reference something like that later on. But um, then I was thinking, you know, if it's, like, common day yokai and scary things, the one that I would want to see is, is Buggy. Because clowns are kind of, like kind of like if anyone has seen buggy's original design that's a yokai his name is boogie boogie the clown and that is straight up a yokai it's, it's so scary and so different from what we got of buggy and when you think of like american horror films clowns are it literally it pennywise like think that's a that's a clown whatever and oda literally buggy's design he said he watched a horror movie and said oh i can't do boogie anymore because it's already taken so he did buggy and he also referenced horror he's referenced watching horror films many times in the sbs and i think interviews i forget what, what the uh, not interviews well interviews but then also i think a chapter note recently it was something like if anybody knows um um b b horror movies b b rated horror movies uh this like design you you know this design or something like that and i forget what it was in a reference to i think i might have made a short on it recently but but yeah uh werewolf clowns vampire i think they could fit there and then there's like uh like bigfoot the yeti bigfoot's fun yeah the yeti yeah. abominable snowman the jackal succubus succubus could be this could be where the siren comes in the siren could be a huge one right um harpies are like monet is a thing right but like so maybe we get harpies and sirens and things like that uh there could be like a fishman version too where it's like uh man like like the cursed thing that we saw i forget the what it love was. the loveland frogman something something and and at the end of the day the, these things could be stuff that Oda has already referenced. I remember I told you, I was like, oh, I really want to, before this call, I want to go back and look through all these things. There's certain panels before every arc where there's like a weird reference to like things like this. And they were gags, but maybe they weren't gags and Oda was introducing. And I saw some people on Twitter saying like Zoro's moveset, he had the demon horse. 
demon horse. Now we have the demon horse, and that was his opponent. Fire bird for Usopp. Maybe that was an indicator that he would fight the Itsumade. Like, it, it, maybe we look at some of these characters and we look at their moves, and it's like, huh, that's a weird name that Oda gave it to gave to them. And if Saint Venus, the swordsman of the Gorosei, is demon horse, and that was a move that Zoro had. Well, we already thought that there were going to be opponents, so like you just put two and two together, and it's like maybe we can filter through some things like that and figure things out, and maybe we can find out uh, holy knights, holy knight names from from those random attacks. Maybe we look at some of Frankie's attacks and like, huh, that's a weird that's that was a weird one, Frankie or Choppers, Choppers. Maybe we look at one of his and and see like I think a lot of people like the Windingu. I think is like a yokai from Canada. The Windigo? Wendigo, yeah, yeah, some kind of like I say yokai from Canada, but it's like an average yokai from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, Canadian yeah. yokai, the Wendigo. Yeah, like Chopper ends up fighting. That's the hilarious. Wendigo. I think that would end up looking more like the Holy Knight that we saw with the jackal head, like some kind of dead, kind of like antelopish deer-like creature. So maybe we already saw that. So, um, yeah, it is interesting. Funny enough. Uh, I, I didn't want to put this theory out there, but like one of the Holy Knights is wearing like a gas mask and with Akira Toriyama passing away recently, like I already knew this and I already thought about this. I think I brought it up too, but um, people don't know that's Akira Toriyama's like avatar. Oda has a fish head. Akira Toriyama just has a gas mask. Like he's just like this round dude with a gas mask. And it kind of, it, it's not the same thing, but I was like, huh, I wonder why a gas mask. And I couldn't think of like, like a gas mask yokai, right? Like, is, I, I don't know what that would be, but. I else? guess it could be like a Scooby-Doo villain, like a gas mask killer. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Scooby-Doo could make, like, Scooby-Doo is like an international phenomenon. Everybody, Scooby-Doo has touched all, all parts of the world. They have the most. John Cena was in Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I know you saw that recent viral clip where the tweet was literally like, "Damn, Scooby Doo had the ins most insane collabs," and it was a tweet. Yeah, yeah. And it was and it was John Cena. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, it was huge. They, with, they, I think they had it with uh, Green Day and, and like these bands. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. There was like an Australian uh, get, uh, band. There was like a Japanese thing too. They literally every continent. They have collabs with like famous people around the world, and it's. Pretty impressive. I wouldn't be surprised. If, I hey, think Stephen Hawking had one too. He has to. Why wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when they get these clubs, it's like the actual people. It's not like like John Cena was the voice of the person. It wasn't like a made up. It wasn't like a like a Family Guy version. You know, it was like the real, real deal. So the that's real deal. Bad. Yeah, exactly. It was the real John Cena. If anybody's seen the clip, that's the real John Cena. He can do that. Um. So, hey. Hey, I Maybe believe we it. Maybe Luchador. Luchadora from the Holy Knights. That'd be interesting. Yeah, what would that be? The, uh, the, the progenitor of the Luchadoras? Yeah, yeah. The Luchador? Not? That's hilarious. Yeah. King Taco is in the, uh, the world government, so. Oh, and then we do have, like, uh, Abraham Lincoln in the world government, too. Yeah, so. He's, like, so, one of the kings. King Hamburg. Yeah, and, and, and so... Abraham Lincoln would mean that we get uh Ronald McDonald? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. That's I think uh, I think Oda can go really crazy with these designs, bro. The Holy Knights, I I have them on such a high pedestal. I hope they don't disappoint. Yeah. That's why I'm worried, but I'm also like at least this reveal you can't be worried about like their foundation. Their foundation is going to be cool. It's more like how Oda cooks with them afterwards. Because, like, we could have done good things with the scabbards. We could have done good things with the satellites. We could have done good things with the Toby Ropo. Did we? No. Um, you know, is it their fault as th the starting off point? No. So, like, that's where I'm worried. It's like, is it going to go the wayside of the rest of the straw hats? Where it's like, like, I think someone said it. We've had, like, five brook panels or something like that in all of Egghead. And like, you know, that might not be your favorite straw hat, but it is a straw hat. And he's got less time than like Sentamaru. No offense to Sentamaru, but it's like Sentamaru know. had like a whole chapter. Yeah. Yeah. We even got his backstory. A little bit. He was adopted. He was adopted, that was it. Yeah. He, guys adopted, man. It was big. 
Well, well, yeah, he was defeating bears. That's crazy. You know what I mean? I mean, we yeah. did get a decent chunk from him. We know that two dads adopted him, and he lived a very normal life thereafter. And he's just a great character all around. The defense, he learned perfectly from... He Like, he was out there surviving Kizaru better than most other characters would. And he, and then Kizaru hit us like, where do you think you learned your defense from? And that, hey, hey. That's, that's such a strange Admiral. line. It's like, where do you yeah. think you learned that defense from? Yeah, because I was the daddy that beat you. You know what I mean? Like, at least we know that Sentamaru had an Asian upbringing, right? So um, that's one relatable point. Can we relate to Brooke? I don't even know Brooke. You know, at the end of the day, um, you don't even like his music. And so no, I don't. we can't say that about Sentamaru. He's... What is he? Sh the worst thing that he's given us was that cursed O'Hara refresher, where everyone's smiling in the postcard thing. That what, was. What if that's what? O what if that's what O'Hara was to send Tomaru though? Yeah, that's how Vega Punk and Kizaru told him it was right. Like, but that's like the worst thing that we got from him. That he was telling like this cursed story timeline to the rest of Egghead. Like, ah, I remember it just like yesterday. Everyone was smiling as the island burned down, and we raised it to, to. Uh, well, not necessarily raised it because the book survived and Saul survived. And, like, the island was fine. Hey, no, well, the island man. was still there. I don't know, yeah. man. Buster called deleting islands. I, I don't know about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Delete. Hey, hey, hey. People want to say delete islands. Like, I could step foot on O'Hara if I wanted to. I yeah. can even go for a swim. Do you think O'Hara is blocked off nowadays? Or do you think it's still, like, open to the public? Listen, the world's worst criminal made it there. Right, oh, days you're right. and the giants too. Giants. And Vegapunk. Giants. They weren't even the scary giants. They were the new giants as kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like these weren't even this is like 20 or th not 20 or like 30, 40. Like these are baby giants. The world's worst criminal just showed up and just stood there and had held interviews, asked the giants, who are you? What are you doing here? And then Vegapunk showed up, who is a protected world government scientist. He showed up to O'Hara. If they needed to, if, if they need to investigate him about like oh is he researching poneglyphs they could have just tracked him to ohara and they that, that through the cracks that's wild to me you know that hey hey uh the gorosei famously the most competent uh, characters um but they're great i love the gorosei yeah yeah i just hope that that part doesn't go down to the holy knights i want i want the holy knights to be uh fully you know every decision they make meaningful Somebody uh somebody commented this, but I was like, they're so right. They're like, yo, Dragon. Uh, he said the Revs were waiting for the Holy Knights to make their move first. He didn't say nothing about the sauce or about the Gorosei. Yeah, see, I'm, 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 I, I'll, I'll be transparent, guys. I have a Dragon video. I, I have another one already posted. Two Dragon videos back to back, and that's not where it stops. There's three more on the way. Dragon videos, right? Paul and loves Dragon. I thought that Dragon is number one, but. What Sai just told me is worrisome for the Holy Knights. Dragon being Dragon with the what he's shown us right at this point, and he's worried of the Holy Knights, and he's like, they're our main enemy. I'm almost concerned then, because then that would mean that like equal and opposite force. Oda would not make the Holy Knights not um like in so make them so superior to the to to the revs. That they would be not a match. Why would Dragon say that's our real war just to get dog walked by the Holy Knights? So that's worrisome because I don't regard the Revs in its entirety as like this terrifying force. I don't look at Bello Betty and Morley and be like, oh no. You're like, yeah, they were. If, oh if the, no. Like if the Admirals wanted to, if if Greenbull hadn't needed to fight also Fuji Tora, I'm pretty sure the Admirals would kind of steamroll the, 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 and like they had to protect the Celestial Dragons. I think they would steamroll most of the commanders aside from, you know, Sabo and maybe Karasu. And Ivankov, we don't know where Ivankov's at. Ivankov's in this weird time, post time skip bubble where he's like, he kind of was insane at Marineford and we just kind of, he was a background character. He's in line with Kuma now that we know how quick crazy Kuma is. And Dragon, we don't know where he's at. But at the end of the day, I don't think the Holy Knights have to be that crazy to, like, be a threat to the the reps. And that's where I'm like, when you said, like, oh, like, Dragon said we're worried about the Holy Knights and not the Gorosei. I'm sitting there like, that's not even that meaningful to me because you don't really have to be that big of a deal. Who did they stop? Peachbeard? Who's that guy? You know what I mean? Like, th that was a no-named person from Kaido's crew. 
or not Kaido, Blackbeard's crew. That Blackbeard didn't even mention. After Peachbeard got defeated, I don't even think Blackbeard even talked about Peachbeard. So no. It, yeah. I, so I, I it, got tossed at the wayside. It's so sad to see. And then, and then what did we add to the revs in the first place? We added Humpty Dumpty, this Ushi dude that I hate. And then, like, the pre... pre like design of nami then none of these characters give me terror you know like i'm worried about them uh, uh slapping down a holy night i'm pretty sure all of them combined might not even scratch a holy night right so so i don't know i don't know where i'm at with the holy knights i want them to be scary but it's like there's a pattern oda has done with this like second tier characters from like the main character which kaido big mom emu luffy right and then you have their main cast of commanders and then you have the lower rung that's also reflected in the straw hats so it's like oh, man like it's worrisome and i don't even think the straw hats lower rung can even should be able to fight the holy knights at this moment so we need a power up. We need like a mini training arc for some of the straw hats. Not all of them. I mean, I mean, you know, like I, I guess never say no to training, but which that's a good segue because yeah. this in this chapter we kind of open the the pearly white gates that people have been a, a, afraid of, which is Sanji saying to Nami, "Hey, yo, you guys get off the island, no matter what. Don't worry about us. You guys get off." And so it's like that kind of opens the door for exactly that like the weak weaker crew maybe in junction with Jinbei and Zoro leave or it seems like maybe Jinbei and Zoro have to hold off the Itsumade which is something we talked about before we didn't say it in the light of all the Gorosei but um I think when the when it was coming through with all the Gorosei we did say like this kind of opens up that some of the Straw Hats could leave in parts um and that's kind of said outright in this thing so maybe we I get would them. love it because because like in this chapter pretty much all the straw hats are near the exit except for sanji zoro jimbi and luffy like literally like usopp nami robin chopper brooke they're all right there by the ship bonnie kuma atlas are at the bottom with the giants on their ship and that's like yeah dude like we could actually split up here and this could be really good for some of the quote lesser straw hats that need that power up like maybe they go to elbath maybe they get a lot of stuff done while luffy and the boys hold it down here yeah yeah and and uh we never i don't think we ever brought up this point um when we talked about the straw hats splitting up but we did talk about like the strongest straw hats having to stay but what would that look like what would that mean in the long run how do they get back it would sound good like as an idea but on paper it's harder to enact um in a way that feels good in it's possible sure but then i was also thinking like because i have this uh i wouldn't say this uh it's not a specific theory but it's more so like a perspective that i had for a lot of theories which was that oda was using the movies as a sandbox for certain ideas so as an example i have an entire video about strong world how strong world basically foreshadowed or was Oda's sandbox to test out most of the time skip up until Egghead, essentially, because the way he defeated Shiki, which was the King of Beasts, because he's a lion, he's X Rocks pirate, he had floating island. The way Luffy beat him was the same way he beat Kaido. Giant limb coated in lightning and it destroyed whatever. And, you know, in the Strong World, he didn't have the island move, but there's so many parallels. And I have an entire video on that. But the overarching thing is that Oda gives notes about to these movies we know that with strong world he wrote all of strong world but thereafter he took a lesser role and he whether it was like design or or outfits or or some plot points we know with film red he gave 17 pages of bullet notes to the director and he was less on hand and he even in that interview was saying like i think it's the role of the ant the the movie director to make the movie i might not agree with all the things but he's there to make sure that the devil fruit powers are consistent he's there to make sure that the outfits and the characters they you know they're in the right place i think you mentioned that he didn't think uh bluno and Khalifa were back in the story and he and the director actually had to like discuss that prior to film red and then we got them reintroduced in the story thereafter and so um the I say all that because the focal point is actually film gold which film gold had a heavy celestial dragon thematic and one thing that I really really liked about that movie was the plot point of they took Zoro hostage 
Zoro was essentially held hostage, uh, and Luffy and all of them had to do this insane plan to get, like, not get Zoro back, but, like, Luffy was also, like, underground, and he couldn't help. Zoro was held hostage, so all the other Straw Hats had to devise a plan to free him. And it was in... It, besides Sanji, they were extreme... They didn't have Jinbei at the time, either. So they are extremely blunted in terms of how they were able to do it. And, like, each Straw Hat in that moment had probably some of the best portrayal. Like, Usopp's fight is something I replayed, and I actually liked it, because he went up against such a funny power for his character. It made sense. It didn't make him insanely strong, but it made his character feel good. And we haven't had that in the series. I would argue that Usopp's portrayal in Film Gold was better than even Dressrosa, because it used his entire character of, like, luck and unlucky and lying and and his how he uses teammates and his planning to fight against a cracked-ass power that that she literally stole Luffy's luck and was fighting Usopp with Luffy's luck, which is like so nuanced. And that was in the scope of that movie. And I would, you know, I would like that to happen in a larger scheme of things where it's like, yeah, we take away Zoro, we take away Sanji, we take away Luffy. What do the rest of Straw Hats do? They're going to have to have their moments. And I would love for them to have these meaningful moments against characters that they shouldn't be. And, you know, the end of the rant is. I, I just had a nostalgia of Alabasta. When I was a kid, I generally thought that Alabasta was the last arc going through it because they were dying. Like, the, the, the way the Straw Hats were being beaten, like, Nami had to pull out mirages to get pseudo-stabbed, but she did get stabbed through the foot. I looked at every single one of those fights. Zoro had the hardest time there. I'm like, do they live? Like, is this the end of the series? When I was watching Weekly, I was like, whoa. They might actually not survive this arc. This might be the end of One Piece, um, which is ironic because that's when Oda Oda was writing for the end of One Piece to come sooner at that part, and he extended it after Alabasta. But um, I would like that all of that. That's when Nami, Usopp, all the characters, Sanji, Zoro, they felt their best when they had that, like, yo, this is a person I can't beat. Like, I know I can't beat them, but I beat them anyways. And, and even Zoro had that. Zoro had to go above and beyond to do that. So it'd be interesting if we get that here. It'd be interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I, I say, hey, definitely separate the Straw Hats out. Send them to Elbath and then Luffy, Sanji, Zoro, and Jinbei. They can figure it out. They have the ancient robot. If they yeah. need to leave here, they could just use the ancient robot and get out. I mean, obviously, Luffy doesn't know how it works. He doesn't even know it exists right now. Or he doesn't know that it's alive right now even, but... Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of ways for us to meet up with them later. S Bear, Kuma, Luffy is so cracked at this point where it's like he could see someone teleport and just be like, "Oh, me too." You know, like I don't even know, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like he could probably copy the craziest abilities. Like he saw Kuma's ab ab ability, Ababa. <laughs> I don't know why I tripped over that ability. So maybe he copies it. Like we didn't even, we still don't know if that's clones that he pulled out. So. And then Vegapunk also has the warp drive technology. This is the, there's so many ways to facilitate whatever needs to come out of the Straw Hat splitting. And I think the biggest deterrent people have in their minds for it is uh, they dislike it splitting up. Like, everyone gets less focused. But, like, I'm telling them, look at Egghead and look at how Oda split up Egghead. Like, our favorite parts weren't on Egghead. Some of our favorite chapters are not Egghead. They're on Hachinosu. They're on Elbaf. They're in the Reverie. They're they're in so many other places. And Oda weaved it through so masterclass. And it's because it's the last saga. This is what he's had planned. So if he had the plan to split up the strides here, then this is probably something that he's gonna execute really well. And there's no there's no doubt in my mind. The only thing that I am worried about as far as like what Oda's perspective is, is like he it I've been coming to terms with it is like the Gorosei may not be the top end villains like we thought, like the Emu might be, but the Gorosei might not be. And um, this goes back to like one of Oda's main things that he wrote One Piece to be a story about the fight against Yonkos, not the world government. It was the Yonkos first. In the first five year plan, it was the pirates versus the Yonko. And so that doesn't mean that the world government wasn't involved, but. It does kind of imply, like, yo, Blackbeard's the Yonko, Shanks is the Yonko, like, Buggy's the Yonko. That's the main goal. And the Gorosei are going to be giant obstacles. Maybe not, like, 
not fodder, obviously. Emu's not going to be fodderized, I doubt, but but maybe it is, it does lie with Blackbeard. And, you know, I have a video on that, too, but it is interesting what we got. It does still feel too early to get all these forms. I'm not mad. I'm not mad, but it, it makes me feel like One Piece is ending, like, this year a little bit. It's a good... Yeah, it's on. It keeps you on your toes. Keeps you on your toes. Yeah, and that's why I bank on the Holy Knight since we don't know their design yet. Yeah, yeah. What about Sword? What about Sword? Do you think Sword is gonna be like in the mix of the Revs and the Holy Knights? Like, do you think that? Oh yeah. Do you think they're gonna be like on that level? Like, we're gonna have Sword members fighting the Holy Knights? Sword members, probably not like all of them. Mm. Like, if we get a Sword member, it's probably just Kobe. It's interesting yeah kobe versus one of them that'd be fun that would be interesting yeah. Ooh, ooh. what would kobe's like antithesis yokai be huh i don't know but yeah. i mean when I, when I think of like um the holy knights or even the, the gorosei i feel like these are perfect opponents for people who aren't even the straw hats like yeah. i could see the revs coming in cross guild former allies even some of the grand fleet uh some marines even like yeah it, it when i think of the final war i think of all of the sides clashing so the sword would be a part of that for sure so do you think okay okay that's interesting because then the holy knights are kind of like a uniting factor for everyone that's not a straw hat right because like realistically can the revs 1v1 the holy knights or is it the revs plus sword plus the grand fleet like you know what i mean where i it's think like, the revs need help they don't have enough yeah i don't think they have enough manpower to be honest yeah like, yeah. not all of them are fighters. I feel like a lot of their powers are just utility-based. Do you think... Ooh, okay. Ivankov, Ivankov and, like, Sabo are probably going to fight Saturn, right? Like, that would be an interesting thing for, to get back for Kuma. Ivankov and, Sa or Ivankov and Sabo? Yeah, Ivankov has the God Valley run back, you know, with, with Saturn, you know, and then Kuma, what, what he did to Kuma... And then Sabo's also there too, because he saw the the after effect. He saw him as a slave. So, and Sabo loves Kuma. So it's like, it could be. Yeah. The Dorsey also are in that boat too, hmm. where they're bought by other, other, and maybe like the Straw Hats run like like they help everybody. Like yeah. They run like commanders. They're the commanders of like these random kind of like Whitebeard. Oh yeah, like Whitebeard's commanders. Like Whitebeard had a bunch of commanders that had a bunch of people under them. Maybe each straw hat has. That is, you know, the, isn't that their new names like the new the nine su uh, su superior officers or something like that? Oh yeah, something yeah, like that. So maybe that's no. What it is uh, like so the reason I'm like I'm like hesitating on the Ivankov question is I I, I don't disagree. Like I, I obviously <laughs> they're gonna fight somebody, right? Yeah. But I'm just I don't know if it'll be Saturn though. I get the tie-in, but. Yeah, because then otherwise it'd be for Garland if it was to be a narrative tie at least. But Saturn makes a lot of sense because he's also Ginny's, uh, Ginny's person too. So like Ivankov has a vendetta, right? Yeah, Ivankov wouldn't be bad. I don't know if I just I don't know if I do Ivankov and Sabo though. I think that's kind of where I'm hung up. I feel like I want Sabo oh. to fight somebody else. So uh, actually, there's something we didn't bring up on the stream or today yet, though we're past it. Is Sabo? in a room with all these Gorosei, he's completely valid. His entire portrayal, right? Running the way he did, like oh, how yeah. he handled it. There was no shot that he could do more, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought Sabo like getting hit and running away was bad. Yeah, yeah. But you know what does go up is King Cobra. King Cobra got out of his wheelchair to face these five monsters, plus Emu. That guy, that guy is balls, bro. Nah. No? I don't like King Cobra. No, I don't I, like King nah, Cobra. See, see, he, he, I'm exposing you right now because on stream, and, you know, most of your viewers are as, uh, you know, I'm not going to use the word brain broken, but I don't think you'd be opposed to being, like, we're all brain broken in our own ways. Um, size... Uh, I, I would I would use the word loathe. I think one one of the things that Sai loathes. Yeah, you, you, I knew you had this. No, slap. it's just so it's so early. I've been I've been up par. I, yeah, I, I didn't sleep. Last, I'm so tired. If you guys want to know what kept Sai up last night, he was watching on stream. If you guys should tune into his Twitch streams and get to know the real Sai, he's watching. Sai lives and breathes One Piece. You guys might not know this. In his free time, famously 
watches One Piece YouTube videos, top 10 moments, uh, 2024. He's watching that. And he just, his heart vomited the moment Vivi was mentioned. He hates Vivi to court, thinks she's awful, not knock him on material. Hate, yeah, this, I stand by it. Up, yeah, stand I, hate, by I, I think I hate everybody from Alabasta, to be honest. And, and, and that's why I'm, that's why I brought the King Cobra. I'm, I'm, I want to expose the VV part, but like, come on, you have to give Cobra some cojones for, no. the, the, the dude fought par paralysis to, to save Sabo to, and, and was stood up. And not only, he not only faced the demons, but I think what's scary of that, he faced all the blickies too. And he asked them, Hey, do I live from this? He looked at them, pulled out their, 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 oh no, in your word, the glizzy, the glizzy, he, they pulled out all the glizzies for Savo to, uh, not Savo, Cobra. And Cobra did not back down, not a single moment. You know? I think that... The dude was already dead. I mean, like, like, he was a, a dead man, man walking. Action. Dead man you're sitting. Like you like a man of action. You like a man that stands up for what they believe in. Cobra is probably the most respectable person. He stood up against paralysis. And he's a man of action. He did what he did. He, st he protected. That's all he... He just stood there. No, he jumped in front. He pushed Sabo behind him. He's by like, that lot, so the that's such a low bar par. At that, at that lot, with that bar, you could say I'm a big pound supporter. You hate pound? Yeah, I hate pound. I ho I wish he died on whole cake. I mean, that's separate. If uh, fine, if he died, but he was he was pretty cracked. He was doing. I didn't things. like pound. What? Beige no, Pe what, what is what's the kid's name? Pepe Le Pew? Pepe's Pe Pez. Pez Pez, oh sorry, Pez. Pez is Grant Pepe Le Pew. That's the that's the skunk, right? From yeah, from, that's the skunk from Looney Tunes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, Pez. Yeah, Pez, no, I don't, I don't like Pound Grant either. Pepe? Pound is like Garp. He was just the fists. The way he See, like I I like he characters that action. stand up and He's do things. Yeah. I love man, men of action, but here's the thing, they gotta they gotta do like they actually have to do some work. Like Pound did nothing. Wait, Pound saved them. He punched um who he oven. punched somebody yeah he punched the oven. most durable big but he mom didn't he didn't pirate. like hurt Outside oven he didn't beat oven same with cobra cobra stood up but like he lost dude like he's just he's just getting hit he's a you bullet sponge film red. film red had Frankie and oven boxing pound actually looked better against oven in some regard and so pound oh over pound him. looked better than Frankie against oven. Yeah, yeah. Frankie was out here grappling like they were like at a sleepover. Pound actually hit him with it. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. Pound Oven's sucker punched verbal. him. To be fair, and it's it's a sweet. Oven is Katakuri's triplet. That's crazy, dude. Oven. That's why. Nah, I I don't like Oven. I don't like Cobra. Pound. I, yeah, they're they're not strong, dude. Like I Pound I want them civilian. to do something, but they got to be strong anything, too. Pound has the biggest civilian feat in One Piece, maybe. I would argue that maybe... No, the guy that killed T-Bone, biggest civilian feat. But we don't know. We, we, we didn't see it off screen. Did he have his whole family eat him? Like, we don't you know. know. What was, you know what else was off screen? Akainu versus Aokiji. Oh, Blackbeard versus uh, Marco and the Whitebeard there's Remnants. There's no civilians in this. I'm just saying, like, off screen fights go crazy, man. Uh, yeah, but but we your head cannon coming into that stream was T Bone probably gave himself up because he was such a noble guy. You even said that, and that was still that was still a better feat than Pound. How is that? We, See, I wasn't uh, saying that, that's, that's just the thing. Like Pound. the civilian getting surrendered to because I'm not saying T Bone. I'm saying the civilian. As far as civilians go in One Piece, like like yeah. Okay, so it okay. We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll bring it he down then. Best here. As a civilian, Pound did really good, but I still don't like his character. All right, I'm just you know, and and hey, commenters, you tell me. I think I think I'm looking at the first double spread in a decade, in a decade, legendary. And you know, not many characters could just stand up and actually try to defend themselves, fight against this. We have Gear Five, a literal god here, and you know who the last person to do this was? Cobra. And so you know. Alabasta might not be all that bad, you know? Maybe... I think w if Cobra, like, reached into his pockets in his final moments, and then he grabbed a bunch of pockets in and threw it at them, I would like him a lot more. But he kind of just stood there and did this, and he started, like, saying, oh, Queen Lily's letter, 
you know, talked about, and then he just kept on getting cut off. I think that was just really lame. Like, yeah, it was cool was for the moment. Died. Like, I, I, I like this scene, but as yeah. far as Cobra, I'm not, like, walking out of that like a big Cobra fan. Well, how about this? He knows... He knows he walked into death in the first place because he was going to the Gorsa to ask about Poneglyphs, which he knows is a huge taboo. That's a he wanted what he wanted and he went after it. He stood on ten toes and he took it. He took it. You know what I mean? Not many he stood characters. On ten toes. <laughs> he did it. I'm that's a feat in us. I don't know how many people have experienced paralysis. But standing up from like <laughs> how, many, how many of us in the chat right now have experienced paralysis? Like, Hank Schrader, man, stand up, please. My man did what Stephen Hawkins could not, right? And he did it for... Against demons, monsters, the world's worst nightmares. For a kid he didn't even know. You know what I mean? Okay, so, of... so in your opinion, which one is a better showing? Luffy standing in front of the five Gorosei right now in this chapter? Or King Cobra standing up in, in front of the five Gorosei? Which was a better feat? yeah isn't the same feat they're both doing the same thing which was yeah, more there, there, there's the, the the power difference right like luffy at least can he can box these guys cobra can't yeah so then it, in that world cobra is more impressive right yeah i guess he, yeah. he would have to be yeah then gear five luffy i i don't know how he cobra made it is to more statement. impressive than gear five luffy I don't know how he made it that statement, but I'm not mad at that existing gear five. Uh, I don't like I don't like Cobra. I don't like any of those sand people. I think Alabasta needs to go. I wish Crocodile Man, won so that he could take Cobra over and make it a lot better. Yo, Dune hit you with some hate. I hate Dune. I know. I hate you, Dune. You, you, you know why? Dune because it takes place in the desert. <laughs> yeah, you it takes Dune place in the desert and has some of the lamest ideas known to mankind. Like yeah. it is the most bare bones fiction story I've ever seen, and people eat eat it up. Like, it's not bad. Like, it's... I, like, I heard I Dune 2 was good, and I feel like the lore could get amazing, but based that off of Dune 1, no hopes. Yeah. That doesn't solve Dune 1. Like, I, I saw people glazing Dune 2, and until I see it, it's glazing, because they would retroactively, like, ah, oh, Dune 1 was a masterpiece. But then I also saw people say that 1985's Dune was better feeling than Dune 1, and that's just crazy, because it's like... That's like pre Star Wars era Dune, and it's it's doing better than this current Dune, and it's like I could see why because I'm sure they didn't waste time. I'm pretty sure the runtime for that first movie is like an hour and thirty. And this one's like two hours thirty, and it could have been one hour and thirty. They just needed. Oh my god! Don't even get me on the the dialogue too. The dialogue was so poor in that movie. There's so many so many levels to it. In that regard, I would have preferred what we got from the Gorsei. All silent. Just just no talking. You can make it a silent film. Dune 1 as a silent film might have been better. I'm if I could edit it. a really good thumbnail, I would give us both blue eyes for this one. That... The, the Dune eyes. Bro, bro. That's what we're not going to get. What the, the, the Duke guy, whatever, the random guy that just like is really like him. Him floating in the air across the table is one of the most cursed things I've seen. <laughs> like, make that dude a yokai here. That would kind of be that would be <laughs> in legion with this. And then dude comes out of like the the this like tar. He ha he had a you know what he had aura. He he was scary. I didn't understand any of it. We had three hours to kind of figure something out, but waste waste all of our time. Wasn't well, the that. movie like three hours and twenty minutes or something? Dune 1 was 2 hours, like, 40 minutes. I 2 think. hours, 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, whenever somebody says Dune 2 is good, it's usually because of the action scenes and the cinematography. Yeah. And I haven't heard anything good about the story yet, but then again, I don't know a lot of people who actually go out of their way to watch Dune. Yeah. Dune 2, I know a few people that have watched Dune 1 because Dune 2 and made it to Dune 2. I haven't done that yet. But I'm... You know how you said, like, Par, you're a better man than me for giving Dune 2 a chance because you're probably not? Um, I'm with you on that. I'm not probably going to watch it in theaters. I'm going to, you know, uh, wait. Or, you know, whenever that comes out. I don't know if I could... Because, one, it's like I have a son, so I can't even, like, go to the theaters technically. But also, just... Man, I don't even know how long Dune Two is, but after experiencing Dune One, I would have I would have regretted buying a ticket if I watched Dune One. So, 
you have a family of three. Let's say a movie ticket's like $15. Would you rather have 45 bucks in your pocket right now? Or would you rather take your family to watch Dune 2? I, <laughs> I, would, I would get every streaming platform. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you could just get every streaming platform for 45 bucks for a month and then just watch as many movies as, as, many movies as you can. Yeah, and I have better yeah, snacks. Yeah, actually, that's way better. I could get like six popcorn bags for the price of what they gave at the theaters. Like, it's crazy. And then all yeah, the time are sugary drinks. I don't drink sugary drinks, so like I smuggle in drinks every time. So it's it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. And then you know what? Even this conversation is not completely unrelated. Isn't there a, so? Isn't there like a real life strip somewhere in the desert that's like super advanced, or is that just like a fiction thing that I made up? A real life who? Stri I'm gonna look it up. Strip in desert, advanced. Like in our world. Yeah, in our world, right? Yeah. No, I think I made that up. No, everything was advanced in the desert. They got they were famously known for advanced stuff. If if Language. Alabasta had like Vegapunk technology, I think I'd like Alabasta a lot more. Like Hey, wait, Al Alabasta has egghead technology? Yeah, if they did, I think I'd like it more. Which is I'm why I'd prefer I I'd prefer Alabasta if Crocodile took over it. I don't wait, know. Do you, like, do you like gambling? Yeah, I love gambling. Alabasta is the only canonic casino house, technically. Oh yeah, I mean, rain wow. dinners. That's because of that's that's because of crocodile though. That's what I'm saying. Like crocodile should have taken over. They had it before crocodile. The, crocodile they literally, had, dude. The whole casino is modeled after crocodile. I mean, did, but did it rain say dinners. It? It's literally called rain dinners because it's the one place that crocodile had brought rain to. Alright, I gotta go back and see if this. The figurehead is a giant crocodile. It has right, a crocodile right. moat. His base is underneath it. Yeah, his base right. is built under it's the foundation. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He, he's the manager. So so but that doesn't change it. It's on Alabasta. Crocodile want hey, you one of your favorite ish characters, Crocodile. I want to say favorite, that's blasphemy, but like favorite. No, no, no. It, he's actually one of my favorites. He's like okay, top three. So so he wanted Alabasta. He of all the islands in the One Piece world side, he because loved he thought Alabasta. Pluton was there. So that doesn't what was that? That makes Alabasta cooler then. So you so you also hate Pluton. You're a Pluton hater. You, you hate what Crocodile loved. He and devoted most of his life to Alabasta. He created an entire org to convene on getting Alabasta. You still hate. What some of your favorite characters love. Ancient weapons, casinos, crocodile. Hey, if you were in Alabasta, you would be... I don't think crocodile would have lost if you were there, Sai. See, here's the thing. I can like everything crocodile likes. I don't have to like Alabasta, though. I like I like crocodile's vision of Alabasta. What number would you be in Brokeworks? What number would I be? I'd be at like one of the billions. I mean, unless I had like a devil fruit, I don't, I don't think I'd be that impressive. So you think Kobe would achieve more in in the world than you? He in forty five days he went from nothing to to insane, right? You don't think that you join Brokeworks, be a billionth, and climb your ranks like League of Legends, make it from the billionth of iron to to the to the hundreds of of, of in gold or platinum, and then make it your way to the top ten? I think I could. I mean, like, if, if I could actually, like, grind, like, solo leveling in One Piece, then yeah. But, but okay, okay, now now the nuances... I'm assuming just, like, I'm a regular person. Now, nuances, right? Like, you're, you're, you're Team Crocodile, but you don't know because none of the organization knew Mr. Zero. They were just blindly joining. Now, you're in this org. You made it to the top ten. But you find out Crocodile wants to coup Alabasta. What do you do then? Do you leave? Do you leave? Like, is this for, is this guy for real? The leader had me go for this sandbox. Would you leave, bro? No, I, I would. I would help Crocodile take it down, and then leave or stay. Because this is I terrible. would stay to see Crocodile's vision of Alabasta. Like I said, if Crocodile were to take over and do his thing, I'd want to see ah, it. See, see, the, yeah, the loyalty. Sai also demonstrated one other thing that he was talking about in in yesterday's stream. It's like this, like devote loyalty and making uh decisions according to the leader that kind of a thing and like you know laws are laws and stand up for what you believe in but you got to stand with what you believe too right like a kainu you know you know yeah yeah okay all right see 
Good, that, that all worked out. But but I was going to segue earlier away from King Cobra and say the Dune 2 conversation wasn't even uh, unrelated because probably my least favorite part of the chapter was combating, oh my god, this is a Dune reference. And I'm like, come on, guys. This doesn't even look close to the worm. It's not even the same, like, name or, I mean, I guess it's the same name. But sandworms are a thing. Like, SpongeBob did it. Or is it, why can't we say it's a Spongebob reference? This looks more like the Alaskan bullworm than it does to the dune worm. So, you know, that was that was interesting. How that Yeah, the worm it? in this chapter is really cool. I like that it has perfect teeth. I think that's the best yeah. part. But, like, do you, you know, you've read all of, most of Oda's inner dialogue, SBS notes, some of his interviews. Yeah. Do you think that he, this is a dune reference? Like, people think, like, oh, maybe because yeah. dune got really popular, he changed last minute. You no. Know, right? What do you say to the people who are like, well, it breaks the pattern, the Hoki, the Gyuki, the Itsumare, the Bakoku. Uh, but I think that's good. I, I, well, I mean, the, the fact that Jupiter breaks the norm of the Gorose all being like yokai, I think that's perfect. And that's why we were talking about like, oh, like Goatman, you know, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, uh, werewolves, vampires. I think he opens up the door for all of that, especially since he's the youngest Gorose, right? Like the older, the older batch of people could be yokai. Like Shanks' dad could be a yokai. And then when yeah. we hit the newer generation, they, that's when we could get like the other variations of mythologies. Well, like, um, I, I know there's a whole thing where it's like, hey, does Shanks have a brother? Does Shanks, you know, have siblings that we don't know about? And if that's the case, then yeah, he could be the werewolf. Yeah. And that could be, that would make sense why Saturn is doing experiments of like disseminating power through like some kind of lineage type thing. Well, well, yeah. if you apply to the yokai stuff, well, if they don't want to make a devil fruit, because then it's like a one off thing. It sounded like what he wanted to do was give Ginny and the offspring the extract of the fruit without it being wasted and without the sapphire scale stuff. Um, and so that could make sense. Like, wait, how do we pass on to the werewolf stuff if they're like, you know, um, because they were born at a time when maybe gods existed pre void century, who knows, maybe there were other yokai. And so it was easier for them to become these things. Whereas like 800 years later, how do you make Shanks into a yokai? How do you make Mihawk into the yokai? How do you make Mosgard or, or, uh, Rosinante do Flamingo? How do you make them into yokai? But it is interesting because like now you look at characters like do Flamingo and Shanks, but like Obviously, we can't do it to Shanks, but Doflamingo, he was, like, born with this, like, demonic, like, demon-esque, like, foundation where people, even his own family, even his own father was like, yo, he's different, right? But then you have Homing, who was, like, normal. So it's like, maybe if Doflamingo stayed within it, maybe he would be, like, like, we already thought maybe he'd be a holy knight, but maybe he'd also be a great vessel or like inheritor for these kinds of powers that'd be kind of crazy and then plus, maybe he still is the cool thing about doflamingo too is that he's nicknamed the heavenly demon which yeah. i mean would perfectly fit these guys right yeah, they're all gods right. but they're all demons yeah so like all the yokai all the holy knight falling suit the holy demons right like that celestial yeah. demons, heavenly demons which what have you it it all works really well um so that, that that was interesting, but yeah, the the sandworm. I liked I liked that it, it also went against the the grain, and I say grain because he's agriculture, and the worm fits that. And I like that. I want to know if all these names fit all of the naming schemes because Oda put the craziest names on these dudes. Uh, aside from like Marcus Mars, right? It's pretty straightforward, but like I wonder if these forms also are tied to the names, their powers, what they can do. Um, it, it will be interesting their personalities even maybe it relates to that i don't know how saturn works with 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 that but some people think that his regeneration power could be time-based which i disagree with because that's not how it's depicted but you know um there, there's a lot of there's a lot to to come from this single double spread and oh I'm yeah excited. and now time to go to page four yeah yeah page <laughs> I'm, kidding, four. I'm kidding we're gonna talk about nasujuro um you know slicing the pacifista he kind of freezes them which is really cool very yeah. precise freezing mechanics here. Uh, Itsumare flies up. Sanji takes note of it, which I think we already talked about too, how it looks like the Jerma bird. Yeah. And it's a pretty cool shot right there too. It also looks like the impel down bird, the basilisk, which was literally lizard plus yeah. bird. So that looks was like the basilisk. Um, um, I was... Uh, yeah. uh, on the Nasujiro thing. Guys, that's not... Uh, from what we know, that's not a black blade. 
That is oh a yeah, black yeah yeah blade. The uh, we've seen this sword in its silver sheen. Oh, and I forgot we talked about that off call. I was like, why are you repeating this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, was, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was like 10 minutes before we started. Yeah. But yeah. Because it's wild. I'm like, we've seen this sword, guys. Like, no. He, it, it, how is this a black blade? Like, unless Oda retcons it. No, right? yeah, dude, you have no idea. I just, I literally got a comment 19 minutes ago that says, now I guess there's a third person with a black blade. And I'm like, no. I was like, no, is, no. It's, yeah. it's hockey, guys. I mean, it, it could have been retconned. Maybe he got it during, you know, since we last saw him, but last we saw him, it was like a normal white blade. Yeah. That, that, that's and, what it was. And I honestly like it better that this is a blackened blade because that, that at least, yeah, sure, if it's a black blade and whatever, but this at least confirms they have hockey. Like, they, like if any, like we didn't really know with Saturn to a certain extent but like now we cannot go back and say like they don't have hockey this is yeah they have armament hockey guys yeah it's good at minimum this is a foundation and it's an important foundation because some people just thought that these were husks some people thought these are just astral projections no hockey they're being controlled by emu but no they, this is hockey right here and this is their bodies and this is their transformations this is it this is right here and yeah now he has an ability that's Kind of similar to Brooke, better than anything Brooke has ever showed us, but, uh, but, but damn, you said Brooke. better than Brooke. Yeah, I mean, hey, he, he's stealing the skeleton, he's stealing the speed, the lightness of skeletons, which I don't think a horse skeleton is that light in all regard, but sure, we'll give it to him. And the freezing, uh, you know, tying the skeleton, underworld freezing sword. Oh, don't forget the swordsman. Some people forget that Brooke is a swordsman, you know people forget that so technically zoro does have to beat brook um or this could be like a thriller bark where brook is like trying to fight the guy you know seal his shadow back he's, he's trying his best and then zoro steps in then he finishes the fight it could yeah. be like that yeah yeah i mean i i, mean, I wouldn't like that because you know I, I i've said it before I, i'm not a big brook fan and even for characters i'm not fans of in one piece i still expect a lot out of them i still want them to look good so yeah. I, I don't want Brooke to lose in that manner. If Brooke loses, cool. But I would want him to like get back up and finish the fight. I kind of hoped he did that on Thriller Bark even. You know, he lost so many times to Ryuma. It's like, I kind of want Brooke to win this. It, it's like his 10-year war, you know? Just, yeah. oh, like he comes here, Ryuma beats him. He comes here, Ryuma beats him. And it's like, dang, like, I kind of wish Brooke did win. Like, I, I get Zoro winning feels good too because he's related to Ryuma and he gets Shusui. But... Yeah. You know, there, there's something about Brooke doing it. Like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah. It, it's it's like, imagine you go to school, Par, and you get bullied, right? There's, like, this guy named Butch, and he beats mm -hmm. you up every single day on the playground. But every day after school, you start working out. You hit the gym. You know, you just bought a Lamborghini. You're feeling really good. You got a gun. You're ready to put Butch down. But before you fight Butch, our mom comes out of the basement, and then she beats Butch up for you Zorro and then locks mom. him in the basement and then he becomes the berry man Zoro is our mom okay yeah um, Zoro's our mom and it's like dang uh, like that's cool and all but like yeah i see we're ready to go from, but i the, the the difference i think here is that would be plausible if ryuma didn't have brooks exact move set it could be like oh like if he didn't have because then it's essentially the whole point of it is that ryuma's sword god and because he's exactly brook there's no world where brook is they have the exact same move set and ryuma and every guard every regard would be a better swordsman than brook there's no way he could beat himself a better version of himself which would be a zombie of sword god but that's what be, that, that's what would be so cool you know like you know overcoming his past shadow and yeah, just growing then, up but then brook would be zoro's final opponent you know what i mean <laughs> like, <laughs> like like and in that regard making brook too strong now I don't even know what Brook would do against Nusajiro because, like, his whole thing is his swordsman power, like, the freezing stuff is the power of the underworld, right? My man yeah. has, what, 50 years in the underworld stuff. Nusajiro should have 800 years. There's no world where Brook has better understanding of the underworld powers than 800-year-old Dark Horse, right? Now, even more than that, even more than that, you know, Brooke was overpowering souls in, in Big Mom. He's Soul King, right? 
And I'm thinking about it like, yo, if these are actual yokai, are they souls? Is it like Brooke has a concert and they just like can't refuse to dance? Like, is there is Brooke their worst threat? But it's like Brooke won't even get that, but he should. They regarded him as a yokai. He's a ghost, dude. And he has soul powers over soul things. So it's like if they're not devil fruits and they're like, like whatever Nusajiro brings out from the underworld, technically Brooke could manhandle it. And I'm almost wondering if that's what Brooke could do against this Gorosei guy. And yeah, sure, he might not win because Nusajiro should be a better swordsman, but Brooke has the potential to like nullify and like clash oh, yeah. with the other powers. And that would be kind of wild. I could give that to Brooke, but everything yeah. else. Like I feel like the one way, like an option with how to hurt the Gorosei would definitely be like Brooke, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, like Brooke Clash I'm a fan like, of that. the Underworld powers. I, I, I would love that. Like, if two Straw Hats combined and fought, like, these things, like, that would be cool, right? Now, no one will ever allow Zora to 2v1 an opponent, right? Uh, but, hey, if it happens against the Gorosei, it's not, like, the worst thing. At yeah. least if the Gorosei is strong, right? It's not Saturn. Um, but, you know. It's not Saturn, damn. Yeah, yeah, like... Hey, may, may, someone brought up that Zoro's uh, move sets going down the eight hot hells or no cold hells. Like his move in this in this chapter is a cold hell, and Sanji's going down the the eight hot hells. And so maybe that's the thing: the sixteen hells together. Maybe they fight. Maybe they fight all the Gorosei. Do you see a world where Zoro, Sanji, shoulder to shoulder, take on multiple Gorosei together, or multiple Holy Knights? Um, I prefer one-on-one -on -one fights personally, so mm. that's kind of where I'm at. Damn, I like two v ones though. If they're done well, I could see it doing. Yeah, doing wonders, yeah. I guess um, JJK kind of changed my perspective on two v ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. love the way they do. I don't. I haven't seen the manga, but people have said it, it keeps that energy. But the way they do two v ones, you would think you hate it, but it's like this is sick. This is really cool. And yeah, I don't it's know really how it good. up, but I'm imagining based off of what you're saying, it feels good. And that's a shonen, like that's breaking shonen uh, tropes where it's like, it's sometimes some series make you mad with like, you know, this doesn't need to be a 1v1. Like, in no context does this need to be a 1v1. Um, it's like your story is not as goofy as One Piece where it makes sense where the this buck, like shoehorning 1v1s every goddamn time, even when it doesn't make sense. Like, but that's because One Piece came from that era and he'll, they'll keep that energy, right? But some of these yeah. modern ones, it's like, bro, this didn't need to be a 1v1. Just just 2v2v1, 2v, 2v1, do it, please. And then they yeah, don't. If, if they can win, they'll win because not, because they don't have plot armor in JJK because a lot of yeah. people just end up dying. So yeah. they're like, yo, when we fight, we got to go in with like the advantage. Yeah, so that's that's why two v ones make sense over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, hey, if Oda Oda brings two v ones and does it well, I think he could do it. I would love it. I mean, he, my man's building up to the battle royale. You know, if Gar if Garp had like a if Garp Law had like competent characters next to them, like throughout the entire thing. 2v like these multiple people fights would feel really sick right but the whole point of it was that there was a linchpin at the very end whether it be kobe or beppo that like changed the scope of the, of the thing but like imagine garp tag teaming with sengoku against like these threats that would feel sick i think that would be dope and i think oda's going that route where he's gonna bring back like these duos and like sanji and zoro 100 percent are gonna have a, a combo. oh yeah no i agree yeah i think yeah. so i'm gonna dial it back from what i said because I, I didn't get where you were trying to go, but mm -hmm. I do agree that Sanji and Zoro will have a team up at one point. But yeah. w w but when you when you mentioned it, I thought it'd be like a 2v2, 2v3 kind of situation where I'm like, ah, yeah. I, at, at that point, kind of just separate them out. But 2v1, yeah. Yeah. I think a 2v1 I, would be really cool. Yeah, I think it would like boil down to like combination fights. Like when Oda yeah. said, uh, uh, you know, with Luffy, how can I make this punch interesting, essentially, is paraphrasing what people, like, kind of mistake is, like, he wasn't ever going to do a punch to, like, he just wanted to make it interesting in his mind, Gear 5, Conquers Hockey, New Form, Giant Fist Size Island, that was to him changing it, right? But his whole scope was, like, how do I make this more interesting? Well, the easiest one that most shonens go is combo fights, combo attacks, combine. Like, Frankie's already doing, trying to do the Gundam thing in Thriller Bark. Yeah, we get more of that, just less memes, more like Hokoku sovereignty. We have Dory and Brogy here. He could teach, he could teach, they could teach duo moves. You know what I mean? Like, how do you mix hockey together to make duo moves? Kaido and Big Mom did something that, like, most other characters can't really do, right? Dory, Brogy can do it, but they fought each other for hundreds of years. 
and they were together for probably 100 more. So it's like, like maybe it'd be sick coming off of Elbaf. How do you make the weaker trio stronger? Give them combo attacks. Make them, uh, like, they don't necessarily become fully strong on their own. Maybe just have them figure out how to have synergy. Something that you said you were impressed by when the Gorosei did. I was impressed when the Blackbeard Pirates were doing it, right? They were actually in synergy. Um, the Straw Hats have pseudo-synergy where they, like, plan and they, they, they're they friends and they love each other. But then, like, this cutthroat thing happens. We get, like, scenes where it's, like they're not on the same page and they're not perfectly in, outside like Sanji and Zoro they have good team up I'm not saying that they don't but like not in the scope of Hakoku sovereignty is what I'm saying where it's like you know San, uh, Usopp and Nami weren't combining attacks against Page One and Big Mom right they were just like lashing out the best they could and maybe if they teamed up they had a better chance I'm not saying that they would but maybe going forward they will so that will be interesting we need to see the Frankie docking again I think that nerfs Frankie. Like if he you, attaches, you think so? the, if he attaches the weak straw hats to him, that nerfs Frankie. Like what he has Usopp as an arm, Nami as a leg. That'll be huge. I don't know. Yeah. Frankie and Robin. Maybe Frankie and Robin gives Frankie limbs, and so she, like it's the callback where Battle Tactics nineteen fifteen comes back, and Robin wasn't a part of it, but now we have the Robin kind of thing going on. So Robin's like, "I'm not gonna join you, but I'll empower you," and she does the gives him hands and legs, and Frankie's like, "Whoa!" and he's like this kind of Godzilla looking dude, right? Like I could see that. That would that would be kind of cool. What if what if it turns out the Frankie donking is like the strongest ability the Sora hats have? Like it would have one shot Ors and Moria together. Is Sanji and Zoro in it? Yeah. Okay. And Luffy's not in it. He wasn't in the original. So Sanji, Luffy is Jimbei in it? Is Jimbei taking like? I I, I think Jimbei and Luffy would join it. Yeah, I add them into it. Oh, like, if it's five of them, oh my god, we're gonna get a Gurren Lagann ending when they become galactic entities. Yeah, like, <laughs> like they will fusion ha. Like they will. It'll dance. be their strongest attack. Listen, I think Oda might bring the fusion ha from Dragon Ball. Like, you know what I mean? Like, some of these characters might fuse and like, like, oh, oh, oh! Remember uh, uh, the Holy Knight Saint Fridge and Mick Shell? They could fusion. That would be kind of crazy. No. Imagine. Yeah, Zoro... the, the, the Holy Knights that we made up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, imagine Zoro and Sanji having to fusion. That would be like Goku Vegeta a little bit, right? In yeah. some worlds. I, I'd cool. say I'd say they I'd say they'd be Goku and Vegeta, a Sanji, bit, and, as far as like Sanji and Zoro. Sort they were of, to fuse, right? yeah, just Actually, two opposites. No, Goku doesn't hate Vegeta. Goku was fine with doing the dance. So like Sanji and Zoro, it'd be like Vegeta and Vegeta that hates himself. Like it would be two Vegetas. Yeah, two Goku. Vegetas. There we go. Vegeta Goku and Nappa. And no, Nappa like he, Nappa really like Vegeta until Vegeta the betrayal. And Vegeta and Frieza. Or like maybe Goku and Frieza. No, but Goku still likes everybody. Goku doesn't really work because yeah. Zoro would hate it and Sanji would hate it. So it'd what have about to be like, it would have to be like uh, Android I guess, I guess... seventeen and Cell, eighteen and Cell. No, seventeen and Cell. Well, I I, I feel like Vegeta and Frieza would be like the best one. Yeah, Vegeta. Yeah. Yeah. Or like King Vegeta and Bardock. <laughs> like, I don't know if they didn't they hate each other or something like that? Like that's why We we have Bardock we didn't really get too many scenes with them. I don't think we have any scenes with them actually. I thought that's why Bardock got his like shit missions where he was like gonna die, but then he kept on living. And then King Vegeta's like that's scorn or something like I'm pretty sure I remember that. Oh maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't recall the episode of Bardock that well. All mm -hmm. I remember is the ending where he fights like chilled for some reason. Yeah, yeah. He goes back in the past and becomes the legendary Super Saiyan. Frieza and Piccolo. Frieza and Piccolo? They don't have too many interactions. Like, yeah, yeah, they fight and they get killed, but... Like, they don't really talk much. I I, I think Frieza and Vegeta was, like, the best yeah. one. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. But yeah, yeah, like, I that would be crazy. Honestly, I don't know if I'd like that. But I could... My point being is that, like... I, I've said my Mindro video, which again, like last chapter, uh, you know, like to 
say it's more canon than not now. And and in that video, the entire video was a Dragon Ball reference because my take was that Oda looked at the key sense that uh, Toriyama introduced and like buffed certain things. So like like you look at certain aspects of how like Shanks is talking to people, the Gorosei, say it's just a better version of what we saw like King Kai. And there's other aspects to that. Like when Yasop and Usopp, I think that that is something Oda will introduce because that's something Oda is nitpicky about with these non-canon things. It's the power. So what Yasop showed probably is a thing. And that is a Dragon Ball, literally a Dragon Ball ability. And so when it comes to, especially in a world post Toriyama, I could see Oda even like changing some things making it more of a tribute to dragon ball and as a as an example of that people don't know this that when naruto ended oda wanted to make the entire chapter a naruto reference he was going to he literally on the record said he was going to draw luffy looking like naruto that's how much he would have tributed naruto's ending the first uh, series ending um, um not baruto uh, and he, 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 the only, the only reason why he did it was because his schedule didn't line up with the ending, uh, with, of Naruto. Naruto had a scheduled ending that Kishimoto had to meet and it just cut off. Uh, Oda was in the middle of, uh, Rosinante's, uh, death story. So he couldn't break it up to have Luffy in it. But if with Toriyama, 1000%. 1000%, we're going to get more references and Fusion Ha is one of those... I think it's one of those legendary ones that I think Oda could easily meme. If it's not in the same light as like Raizo, it could be in the same light as Raizo with, with ninjas, or it could be an actual thing that the the Holy Knights or or like meaningfully meaningfully bring up like somehow, or like these future characters bring up somehow. It would be interesting. Speaking about Frankie and fus fusioning, um, so this chapter is so crazy. This chapter is so <laughs> wild. All the doors it opens, honestly. And now the next door that it opens is the door to Rob Lucci versus Zoro. Yeah, it's crazy that we haven't even gotten there yet. That's why. Yeah, I mean, we're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah, we got yeah. two pages left. Yeah, we already shit on the Usopp thing, but so we don't even talk about that. Yeah, so Zoro wins, which mm. is nice. I'm glad this fight has a proper conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was afraid a little bit that uh, this would be like, hey, Zoro, we got to go. And then they leave or, you know, something happens and they're both like, hey, let's bounce. Uh, I, I'm glad it ended this way. It makes Luchi look good. It makes Zoro look good. And also Sanji, <laughs> I love seeing the Sanji Zoro dynamic, you know, going back to the whole uh, what Vegeta Frieza kind of thing. Yeah, it, it is. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, like literally yeah. Um, somebody made the meme where it's like, yo, like Zoro was sleeping when Luchi said everything about him earlier. But the minute Sanji says something, it's it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Someone made an edit saying, like, uh, Zoro can't even be an African animal. And then Zoro's dot, dot, dot turns to African and then does this. I'm like, oh, my. King of Lightning retweeted that one. I fucking died. But, like, like, e like the memes are funny, all that stuff. But, yeah, I, I do like how... Because I think we both were on a boat where it's like... Um, you know, Oda's not going to show Luchi in a terrible light. And I wouldn't even say that this is terrible um, because it's like, it's weird. I, I saw people saying like, oh, it took like three hits from Gear 5 and they're trying to like comparatively power scale this. Like it, one hit from Zoro is three hits from Gear 5, blah, blah, blah. That means Zoro just can handle Gear 5. Oh my God. I don't know about that because it's like, you know, it, it, this is the co context of this is so different. We off screened like six months of panels, um, and this is like it's not like an equal clash. We don't see the outcome of Zoro per se. Actually, we do. Actually, we do see the outcome of Zoro, and we don't even get a good grasp of like. Is he okay? Because it could be that they even clash and it's one of those shonen things where I think Dragon Ball made this standard where they have the face. Oh no, it's Pokemon. Pokemon, where you have the two <laughs> Pokemon, like you, you're on one side and then the Pokemon's in the in the background and the whole climax was, which Pokemon falls? Oh my God, oh my God, Pikachu fell! And then like Ash loses, right? And it's like, oh, Pokemon made that thing like a standard where it's like you would end every fight with one Pokemon, at least the close ones, one and then you'd be like is the front one or is it the back one which one fell which one fell right oh i never saw like that where like zoro might not be okay after this is that what you're saying 
Yeah, I mean, we didn't. When I was reading the chapter, I was like, oh, we don't even get like in like like he doesn't even land. Like it, when we saw, for example, Zoro versus Kaido. If we cut at this part where Zoro cut Kaido, Zoro's still standing. But we know that Zoro's like, yo, I'm down. That this is my entire body. This is everything, right? So this panel kind of if we paralleled it there we would be cutting off the part where Zoro collapses and we don't know necessarily uh uh Zoro's standpoint and he could be fine he could be fine but then Oda also created a situation where there's a Jinbei perfectly there to carry Zoro right so if Zoro is down just like he was against King right after he took out King he was down and he had to be carried by Frankie so it's like we're 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 not seeing that would be that. wild what? if Zoro couldn't move after this I, I'm just imagining... So I, I love seeing what people have to say online. I think it's hilarious yeah. half the time. So like, yeah. dude, the memes that would come out if Zoro couldn't move after this would be insane. It would be it would be a, a bad week for Zoro yeah. fans. See, and just knowing is, how the discourse goes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the discourse aside, and like that's where I'm kind of at, where it's like they were fighting for a very long time, and it's like... Yeah. Uh, if Zoro... Like, if Jim... Like, yeah, Sanji's carried Zoro, Jinbei's carried Zoro, uh, Frankie's carried Zoro, or not Jinbei, uh, Frankie's carried Zoro, so it's like Jinbei carrying Zoro is not that weird post-fight. Like, literally yeah. everybody has done that in the crew. And that's kind of, I think, Zoro's entire point. He's the, he's the, uh, uh, like, he's the spear. He's the, he's the main fighter for the Straw Hats. Luffy doesn't count in that regard because like Luffy's always on his own, which is like with Kaido or a Big Mom or with Katakuri. Luffy will be on his own, and it's characters like Sanji and Zoro who's supposed to carry. And Zoro is like the last battalion. There's not a single even Sanji would be like, like, um, oh my god, there's a giant demon bird flying towards Nami and Robin. Oh, Zoro's there. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to worry. Yeah. Even if it's a demon bird, it Zoro's there. It's fine. And it, that's kind of vice versa too. Zoro would look at like hey if chopper usopp whatever was split and and like a demon bird was going to them they're like oh sandy's there he's not gonna let anything happen right that's kind of the mutual agreement and so i don't think it would be like negative for zoro but i could see the discourse but yeah i, 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 I don't at think it'd be negative like, either i looked at this and i was like oh man i think he might be like there like oda created the perfect situation for him to collapse and be out of gas for a moment right uh, Jinbei's right there. Perfect. Perfect tank. Jinbei was literally shown flying, like, and he literally, what did he say bro, right before this? He said, sounds like the, the situation's dire. If he's still fighting, I'll drag him back by force. And it's like, yeah, maybe he's fighting his own demons. Remember last time he was fighting a Grim Reaper after, after the fight? So it's like, maybe this time Jinbei sees the Grim Reaper's like, hey, yo! Yo, what the what hell is this? Bleach, what's this Bleach character doing here, right? Yeah, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> guys, come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, so like, I, 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 yeah, I mean, the favorite parts, Sanji goading on Zoro, Zoro ending it quick. I like the way it ended, for sure. I'm curious if Zoro lands on his two feet. Might Dang, I didn't even be. think about that. Like, will Zoro be okay next chapter? I kind of want him to be. Yeah. Mainly because I, I do want him to see the Gorosei and clash with the Gorosei, or at least, like, throw a slash their way and also realize that, hey, these guys are kind of weird. Like, they regenerate, you know, I, we got to, like, do something about this. That's kind of why I would want him to be up. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily like the agenda even, but, you know, just... Which I think agenda pieces... I think it's hilarious. I don't like it, but mm -hmm. I love the memes. I, I eat the memes yeah. up like no other, which is why, like, Zoro falling would be hilarious that week. Yeah, and it, it would be... I think it also could make sense as, hey, like, if Venus was up here, maybe Zoro would. Like, th th there would be a reason for him to meet the Gorosei, but, like, if yeah. he's playing the Itsumade... And people are out here thinking Usopp is going to do something, right? Then imagine a Zoro doing something. Zoro could probably actually stall off the the Itsumade for a decent while, maybe not completely win. I don't. We don't know the uh, the ceilings for the other Gorosei, but maybe this is how Oda creates the danger. Zoro is there. They need to protect him. They can't lose him to Itsumade. He can't defend himself. This is like the Saba Odi a little bit. Zoro is like injured going into it. But um, yeah, like him falling also isn't that crazy because, you know, going into this, I think we both talked about it. Like I kind of looked at Zoro, I, like Luchi was a Luffy antagonist. He gets that push up there. And yeah, yeah now Luffy's above wherever his past antagonists were, that that rung, Luffy superseded that and Yonko's. Like, we don't know what Luffy's doing. So Zoro elevates himself, and I could see Luchi being stronger than Zoro. But I could also see it being, like, 
like how Luffy fought Zoro the first time, where, yeah, Luffy won, but he collapsed multiple times, and at the end of it, he still collapsed, and he was tired. So, like, if Zoro collapses after a fight of with awakened Luchi post-time skip, it's not the weirdest thing to me. Damn, you know dude. I mean? But that means that Jinbei's on box duty again. All oh, Jinbei I mean, does this arc is just move people left and right. I mean, did we want him to come in and stalemate it completely? Yeah, but, like... It, no, no, I, no, I... I, I agree. This is the best way to end it. Like, I, I'm glad Zoro did end it, but it's like, dang, Jimbe, all he's doing is moving boxes, bro. Like, yeah, g g give my yeah. man a different job. I mean, yeah, like, the thing is, Jimbe is also one of those weird characters because, like, in a lot of ways, he should be stronger than what we've seen him of. And, yeah. And, as an example, Marine Ford, that Jimbe is this Jimbe. It's not like Jinbei went through a time skip where he became insanely strong. No, the Jinbei that you see right now, who isn't even doing all that much, like who's who didn't really, like he, he got mad, he got triggered, and then he just clocked him, and that was it. We, it's like Jinbei hasn't really had an even foe. Like, yeah, he really most, hasn't. The most like we've seen of like evenness was when he stood off of Big Mom and then threw her off the ship, but we know Big Mom would beat Jinbei. So it's like, we don't know what Jinbei... And even, I think he he was confident that he could take on Hody, right? Like, like I don't even yeah, think... Yeah, he said that he could on. beat Hody, but he said that wasn't, like, the right... No. Did he say that was the right way or not the right way? It wasn't the right way. Like, yeah, him, it hmm. he, he wanted Luffy to prostrate as a hero, but Luffy didn't want to be a hero. Mm, and so yeah, he, you're like, right. he needed to have, like, some kind of progression. Like, it's just me beating down. There would be no value to this, right? Um, and... But, but he also said the same thing for Luffy too. That that's yeah. why they came up with the sheer Hoshi plan because they said yeah. if if Luffy just shows up and beats Hody, yeah. then that would just be a human solving their problems. Right. And but like and so my point being is like Jimmy's insane. Jimmy's yeah, Jimmy's crazy. And like like he he has the same low key portrayal as Ivankov, except he was a solo warlord who was like with Big Mom with uh uh white beard. White beard. And like he has mi like mythical like people literally call him like a mythical creature like as a fisherman, and so it's like Jimbei Jimbei also handed like took a fisted a Kainu's magma fist pre time skip like that was a thing he held him and back. they also tanked uh, the same attack that killed Ace too yeah so it's like like Jimbei coming over here we we always said it it would be Luchi would have no chance. Like, I don't even, and people bring up who's who as a benchmark for Jinbei and saying like, oh, Jinbei wouldn't stand a chance against uh, Luchi. Look how he fared against who's who. I'm like, I don't think that that was like Jinbei's full extent in that fight. I'm not saying Luchi would lose against Jinbei, but I think that fight would be kind of crazy. Like, Jinbei is not a slouch. He's a semi-older dude who was a warlord and has been active and survived like the big mom pirates basically solo let's let's be real the other fishmen would have died all together <laughs> like and jimbe survived made it to wano and then you know he's still not being pushed and so you know i i would i would think that zoro could go down here and jimbe could offer meaningful resistance uh to 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 the itsu yeah 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 i wouldn't mind that no i think i think that's good that that's some that's honestly like one of the things I did not think of with this chapter, just like Zoro going down, which I mean, yeah, we don't even see his eyes when he when he falls. Yeah, yeah, that that which, was. Which we could say like, oh, Zoro's losing consciousness. Zoro's tired, or you could say Zoro's just looking badass. Like you could go either way with it. So I'm, yeah. I'm kind of curious to see what happens next chapter now. Do you, do you remember th this? Is, what you just said is exactly what happened after the King fight. People were looking for Zoro's eyes. They thought he was straight up dead. Remember that when Venki carried him, people were like, "Oh my God, did he lose a leg? Did he lose an arm?" Because there was like a weird sh shading, and they were thinking that we'd come out and he would be like limbless or something. Or and they were all looking at his eyes, and Oda did hide his eyes up until we ended up seeing him, uh, uh, like recovering with Luffy. But um, you know, as far as seeing things that you know some other people may not see, I'd like to I'd like to commandeer the memes and be like. That's the that's the par vision, you know. Oh my god! <laughs> Someone said it in the thing. They asked a question, saying like like next chapter dragon shows up, 
and it means something to Zoro, and I put a spin on it, and all of a sudden now it's my theory. Someone showed up in your stream and said, "Oh, yep, that's me tapping into the part." I'm like, "No, yeah. I said it was a joke. What do you mean?" And your ass didn't even defend. Him. You knew it was a joke. It's like I think Par was joking. You really can't tell with him. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Are you joking, Sai? Like, come yeah, on." Yeah, I think Par is being serious right there, guys. I I, I really think he uh he, he thinks that Dragon is Zoro's um that, Zoro's yeah. father. Yeah, yeah, and and that I like I tuned in in parts in that stream last night because I was like I came back after putting Zen to sleep again, and I almost missed it and I heard it. I was like, "Are you serious right now? This dude just put the memeiest theory." And you're like, "Yeah, man, Par, man, Par, I, dude, he was I, cooking with this one." Yeah, Par famously famously reading 18 piece like that's not even close to two piece or three piece zoro zoro's dad is dragon is crazy well uh, i mean you did so like i think yesterday you said that dragon visited shimotsuki village which he did and that's when you said that he laid the seed there too i said none of that by the way you can go back in the stream and find out I, no no i, I, I remember hearing that one to one now. This is the oh my god the side vision is crazy the the psychopaths the, <laughs> the psychopath vision psychopathic telepathy right now it's pretty good yeah yeah psychopath yeah. I like that yes yeah, not that telepathy was, uh, psychopathy that was there actually like on the board of names when I was doing YouTube yeah I was like yeah, I can I do am. psychopath yeah but it, it, the, the spelling looked really weird with the V which is why yeah. I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. It'd be psychopathy and people are like people might might call you copath, might call you path. Like they might yeah. really not know. So you know, you did a good thing. The psy path of pain. Uh so final parts of the chapter. We got yeah. uh we don't have too much time left, but final parts of the chapter. Jew Peter eats Luffy. Luffy almost dies right here, actually. I I, I saw um the, the to be like to be continued got slashed off and it just said the end. But thankfully, no. Dorian Broggy slashed that off. And they cut Jupiter into pieces. Uh, Dorian Broggy, man, kind of strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, real quick. I just want when you said that, like the to be continued thing. I was just thinking, imagine like Jupiter's power is the to be continued sign. Like you know how like people think like Luffy's bending reality and Emu might be writing the manga panels and and we'll see manga panels break. Imagine if Jupiter has been the to be continued sign this entire time and it's just been inside his mouth. So every episode has ended with Jupiter just swallowing. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, that'd be Luffy. sick. Yeah. Luffy's oh, dude, I saw somebody. Um. So you know how like the whole like oh like they're gonna break the manga panels. That's gonna be a thing. Yeah. We talked about that a long time ago, and that's a common idea. Yeah. But I yeah, forgot yeah. who it was. There was like some. There was some creator. I I don't remember who now. But they were like, hey, like. I had an original idea, like, this is going to be crazy, but I think Emu's going to break the manga panels. And they posted that, like, last week, and I was like, no, that's a common theory. You can't yeah. commandeer this. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget. I, I think it was in lieu of uh, Toriyama passing away because he famously yes, that's uh, what it was. popularized it, and so that came back. But, yeah, that is the original thing. When people first thought about that um, was everybody referenced like hey drag toriyama did this and we know that oda loves toriyama and if he's making uh like an ode to all these other things dragon ball would be one of them just like me and then the but the manga panel one was something i didn't know because i didn't read uh dragon ball like that i remember seeing it in the in the scope of the internet previously but yeah when people brought that up the first thing were like yo toriyama did this i could see luffy like bending it and i'd love yeah. that i even made one of my theories is uh Oh, I remember now. I was saying that Emu, uh, this is back when uh, my Shadows Theory, and I was saying that um, the Void Sentry is the 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 katakana behind behind the void sentry empty throne and emu they're all connected so void empty and emu emu would have some kind of name scheme to void which what is what we're seeing now if the mu thing pans out as the 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 final uh, understanding of it but void empty vo uh, thing i was saying that the void sentry was named after emu that part came true but what i was saying was that it would be interesting because like blackbeard's panels the Blackbeard Jaya panel, for example, it has no borders. There's no borders. It's just blank white background. And there's only a few times in the series where Oda does that. And I remember then after that, people were like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. Because then it would be like a Toriyama type of thing of getting, breaking, interacting with the, the borders. And I was like, oh, that's wild. And then the painting stuff. And then, like you said, like, 
a lot of people, you know, again, the, the Toriyama thing that's existed for 30 years, right? Like it's a, yeah. Oda really said, I'm making references to Tom and Jerry and all these things I really loved. Yeah. So it's like that at the end of the day, that's like that, that being a unique one's kind of funny, but, um, but I, it just reminded I, me because um, it, I, I'm afraid of the day when I bring up the theory again and then people are like, oh, you're stealing this guy's theory, huh? Because yeah. I, I, th that's like one of the things I hate the most because I forgot what it was. I, I talked about, I think it was just astral projection. I was like, yeah, like I'm starting to believe this this theory now. Yeah. Uh, and then some, or, and then I talked about like the whole thing with like the emu and the, the Gorosei potentially being satellites, which are all old theories. Yeah. And then somebody was like, oh, you're stealing this guy's theory. It's like, dude, like, no, it's, it's like common. Like everybody thinks like everybody's had this idea at one point. Especially now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I don't even watch YouTube theories, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like after it, talking about the chapter for so long, like I, I can't, I don't want to look at this chapter anymore. Yeah. It, like, Get the Gorosei it, out of here. It, it's like. Again, it's no offense, but like I, I look at it like this, right? When I said that mind rope is a thing, telepathy was a thing, at the time, people literally responded saying, that's magic. That does, you th you're reading two piece, blah, 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 right? That's also way different than if I, like last week, was like, I think telepathy is going to be a crazy thing, guys. Like, it's going to be in the one piece thing, like after the Gorosei show it. Like, that's a very different point of, like, you know, um, uh, uh, of, of, of origination of the idea you know what i mean the closer you get to it the easier it is to say but that's also why it's like some of these theories when you're like chapter out it's hard to say like oh this is my theory right that's why when i like on stream i'm like i'm sure i'm sure most of these things have already been said right yeah. like that small thing of me saying like zoro uh uh falling down that's just my reaction now is that a full theory that's not even a full theory but you said like you haven't like you haven't thought about that, but I'm sure someone has thought about that. Like, I can't be the only oh, person yeah. at Zoro here and said, like, yo, he didn't land. We don't know if he landed. Like, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that, that hone on to that. So it's like, some this of is one of those things where, hive mind. yeah, there's like millions of people who read the same story that we do. I'm sure there's yeah. like at least a hundred, a thousand people who yeah. also thought of the same thing. That's how most theories are even, you know, just I will unless say, it's like super, super unique. Like Chef McShell, ain't nobody thinking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think uh, Chef Mike is definitely the most unique idea that we've cooked. Recycle up. curd. Recycle curd. That if someone else comes out with a recycle, oh my god, I always thought this is the case. I but those are like so. But the theories that we cook up together sometimes, those are theories that will probably never happen. But it's it's like that zero point zero zero one percent chance that makes it unique. Hey, some of our ideas come through, and the ones that we know are kind of out there we label them we label them we know which ones are yeah we know they're right? silly yeah yeah but like but then there's other ones right well okay okay uh, separate from you but like, i think I, the gorsei have hockey <laughs> why was that funny no sai he paints his blade black are you joking Mihawk learned it from someone <laughs> We don't know if they have observation hockey. It's, not, it's never confirmed. Yeah, you know you know what's even crazier than that? So I'm going to take a guess and say they have sword. observation hockey. We don't even need to look at the sword to know that they have hockey by this chapter. Lucci literally goes, what's that strange hockey out there? You know what I mean? Like he, tells us, he tells us straight up that that's hockey, right? And I think Jinbei also low-key was like, yo, that, that seems... I know Jinbei said ominous presence, right? Like energy. I don't know if he's specific. Did he say hockey? He, might he said have. ominous presence. Yeah, so Lucci specifically said, aren't you curious about where all this strong hockey is from? So, like, yeah, boom, we got hockey. They have hockey. Good, great, awesome. We're past that now. You know, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, but this, um, this, uh, this, this, um, last double spread page, uh, what, uh, thing is interesting. We, yeah, I, I don't know what we're doing with this, the mouth and the scar and the chin strap it's all interesting but like hey i like the worm i'm not mad at it the teeth great addition oda the name you know i want clarifications and i don't know if i can rely on viz for that so oda if you could please spell it out in english like you did laugh tail let me know because you know that'd also be cool too Go for the sandworm thing yeah 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 um i, I feel like so far tcb is the only place that i saw them spell it like this yeah so I'm really yeah. curious to see what other translators will say. I think the most I, I've, normal... seen, I've seen more sand worms than sand worm. Yeah, I think the most 
like it's kind of like mother flame mother frame in that yeah sense. Like, they would both have a similar spelling in katakana but what i pointed out on stream and some people verified too is that there would be other ways to spell both words um and ba because it's a it's based off of syllables you're transliterating uh based off of syllables of foreign words um it's not like yuki or uh, yeah yuki and all these other japanese names this one it wouldn't have made sense if oda just put the kanji for sand and worm and made a sandworm because it's the name of it so he's deriving it from a foreign context and there's a different way to spell it like both of our names we'd be able to spell it in at least three different ways and it all come it, even if you have a different dialect and how you pronounce some stuff that would change the katakana in some ways um so it's it, not that it's a huge deal i'm just curious uh yeah me too and and it it lends itself to the idea that like oda seems very specific with the Gorosei, especially their names, their powers, what they're showing, what they're godheads of. There's so many intricate parts that I, I want to know actually what Oda intended with these characters. I don't want this to be a mystery. If Oda is depicting this like a, hey, I'm revealing everything about the Gorosei, figure it out. Figure out what Emu is. Figure out what the Holy Knights are, right? If we're starting off with a false premise like the Mother Flame, Mother Frame, which that one's less egregious than like, you know, us not knowing what this truly is in Oda's perspective when he's trying to reveal it is a little tough. But that again, Oda has been playing with the katakana spelling. The only English word he's ever done technically, and it's right in the manga, is Laugh Tale. He spelled it out in English. But um, there's been times where he's he's redacted some other stuff. But, um, but that being said, uh, we did get the ultimate thing that we were kind of like, dude, are are these guys casually just walking up and slicing, slicing and dicing? They and are, dude. They did. They and are. And it doesn't look like hockey. There's no lightning. Nope. There's no armament. It's just smiles. No Ryu O. Nothing. No less than the Island Eater. That's what Jupiter. The got. Island Eater and the Punk Victoria got more respect than Jupiter here. Yeah. Yeah, and arguably this is a little bit more dangerous because they don't know where Luffy is in the in this thing. They could have sliced him. No, like that's all, what, what are you talking about? That's their observation hockey at full at full play. Oh, oh. They said it in the chapter. They said, "Oh, try not to hit him," and he said, "Yeah, I see where he's at." Wait, did they say that? No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Oh, I was like, "Wait, what?" I'm sorry. I I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't I... think you would double check it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, I was like, I, I'm literate now. I'm just like dragon, but worse, you know, like oh, I'm just no. like dragon guys. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know what that reference, that's my latest dragon video. But yeah, like obviously it's like Kizaru slicing and dicing the, the thing. He could have easily cut them up. But observation feet, right? Observation hockey feet. But it is wild, right? Like there's more giants. They're not even stressing. They're smiling. They're laughing like they're like a Luffy. You know, We're literally people... about to see giant fodder just pop up to, like in the very next chapter and just start boxing Warkuri, Saturn, and all these guys. While it's insane. Laughing. If people yeah, are mad about Gear 5 having the audacity of smiling through all of the stuff, even though that's his like sort of character trait, maybe even a curse. Like, we're going to have non-cursed giants, fodder giants, smiling like this, gaba ba 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 and gya gi ga gi and they're going to run up on these dudes. And I, like, yeah, sure, they can regenerate, but that doesn't stop, like, Jupiter from getting sliced in half like this. This is the discussion of difference between uh, durability and just, like, hacks. Like, this is not durability. This is just, like... They're so strong, bro. <laughs> like... <laughs> like uh somebody somebody said it and it's it's a joke that i think just gets funnier with time hey, it's one of those timeless jokes but they're like yo imagine if mr three was on the island like imagine what he could do to the gorosei yeah and it's like you're not you're not exactly wrong yeah like i saw like, i don't know dude it, like you know and and we talked about this a little bit like maybe the giants were powerful form, there was a scheme like it wasn't an honorable fight they were motivated it's like the way they went the way they went out because technically they hurt each other and they were just like yeah so it's like there's all that stuff but like this is still wild like from start to end of this chapter they like the, the when the saturn came in they said vice admirals and below or commodores and below whatever it is don't look run away go to the ships that's how scary saint saturn's landfall is in a chapter called planet fall yes the title's planet fall five planets have fallen onto this land and the giants see it. 
they Lucci can feel it from an uh, from the sky, literally a sky away. And the Giants are just laughing and walking, strolling, and it's like they're like golfing like they're Tiger Woods at a mini golf park. Like they just casually chop his head off. Like they're and I, it's not even like a dual attack where they hit the same angle. No, no, no. They they slice him from two different angles, which yeah. I guess would help it, to be honest. Uh that is like the most effective way to cut him. Yeah. But still, it's like, yeah, like you could just chop this guy in half. I think Zoro could cut this guy in like into a thousand pieces, pull a little Pika. And like, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and like, yeah, you could say it's a named attack. But like, this doesn't even feel like a named attack. This just feels like they made up a, like some like deep sounding phrase right when Luffy was eaten by the darkness. And he's like, child of the sawing sun. And like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even feel like this was so effortful. It's it's a named attack, but it's also part of their conversation. Like they said, hey, did you see him? What a nostalgic face. A dark belly is no place for someone like that. Let's go, child of the sawing sun. Oh, yeah. So it's not even, that's what let's, I'm saying. Yeah, like, like, let's go, sun god. Let's get out of yeah. here. Like they literally, like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, and even the notes TCB says, it says it makes it almost seem like a continuation of the dialogue about darkness being no place for Luffy. So, like, the, from multiple angles, like, this is as casual as casual can get. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is... I don't know how to even relate this to anybody. Can can Zoro do this? Because if... Because I... Can, I think Zoro could. If Dorian Bragi can cut this guy, I think Zoro can. With no named attack. Like mid conversation with Sanji. Okay, well, so so we have to power scale named attacks now, right? Yeah. So we have named attacks that are specialized, like what Zoro did to Luchi in this chapter. We yeah. have normal named attacks, and then we have named attacks that are just part of a conversation. That that's yeah. how I would scale them. Yeah. I feel like Zoro could do it with the same scale to name attack. And like so Sanji and Zoro. Yeah, yeah, Sanji and yeah, they could I think, just. I think Sanji could just like kick through him, and then Zoro could just sli uh, like Sanji slice him. Zoro versus Dory Brogi. Oh man, I I want to give that to Sanji and Zoro, but I don't even know anymore, dude. Like these guys are being like we haven't seen them lose yet. Like they've been riding this this power scaling hide right now, and like we have to recognize like Sanji is running a away from in this chapter and i'm not saying that as like oh sanji's a wimp whatever right what i'm saying is like in that same chapter where Ra Ra sanji's like yo i can't explain in words something's terrifying happening he did stand off of them uh, with saturn yeah no fear, right but the point is in this chapter sanji's running away we don't even know if zoro's going to be making it to the itzumade fight and meanwhile <laughs> tori brogi and the hooligans are just Hey, bro, you see Hanging that? out, dude. They're going to that, Dave and Buster's. That's us. That's what we we came here. That Buster call, that wasn't even a warm-up. That was getting out of bed. The Gora say, they're our little bros. Time to show them what, what we did 100 years ago, right? Like, like... I, I think it'd be so disrespectful if the no-name giants come in next chapter and they start boxing Saturn and uh, War Kuddy. And, and it, it would be absurd to, like... Like, I feel like 1v1... Dory versus Zoro. Zori Zoro wins easily. Like not even maybe not easily, but like it that's what it feels like it should be. But like is it going to end up that way? Like I don't know. it's kind of scary. It's a little scary yeah. that the giants coming and showing like this. Yeah, I mean to be fair, Jupiter is not done yet. Yeah. But yeah. like it, it's still like damn dude, like the fact that they can cut him. I mean, I guess you know, going back to Saturn, I mean, technically, Kuma, like, punched him through a building and broke his arm. Frankie shot through him. Like, but, but, like, take hmm. the casualness into account. Kuma yeah. had the force Kuma had of like, his life. <laughs> yeah, 30, 30 years of pain and suffering. And sure, he wasn't himself fine, but, like, he hockey fisted up, blew him through buildings. Yeah, Saturn was fine, but, like... This again, the emphasis on how casual Oda made the giants in this chapter, opposed to everybody else. When Sanji was, was blocking, when Frankie was blocking, it wasn't casual. They were they were trying, they were doing stuff, right? And like Luffy is casual by nature now. It's not casual, but like lack like nonchalant, I would get I would, I'd say more. Like 
people can't even make it. Like, Kaido brought him to a Gear 5 serious thing where, like, Luffy was angry. Luffy was doing things, right? Um, yeah. Um, whereas, like, we haven't really seen that out of Luffy just yet, despite, you know, some of the scenes. And it's like, the Giants are showing up like Gear 5 Luffy, low-key, without any, like, we don't have any reason to put them anywhere close to Gear 5, as far as demeanor, as far as personality, like, oh, personalities aside, but, like, like power, right? Like, it's it's so weird. It's so weird. And then it's not Hokoku sovereignty, you know what I mean? And they, it, like, he, they didn't even, like, acknowledge, they didn't even, like, face to face, he just showed up and sliced them, you know? It's it was like, very casual. It, like at this it's, point, maybe it's Dory Brokey do what Zoro did to Monet. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he, here's a, here's a good one. This is like Luffy and Zoro when they saw Mister Mister Five, was it the booger guy? And the, oh, the yeah. lemon girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss like all Sunday. No, no Sunday that, was Robin. Wednesday. No, Vivi. Tuesday. Was, yeah. Something. Miss Tuesday. Like it it was, was it? one of the days, man. Like Miss Valentine's Day. Yes. Yes. She yeah. Was it was. One. It was Miss Valentine's Day. Yeah. 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 Blonde one. Yeah. 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 yeah it's just a very nonchalant. Like, hey, get out of her way. You're. You know. You're, you're blocking with. You're blocking the prize here. Yeah. And they just get to Luffy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, with, with you, Peter. Like, I, I know he's not out, but just being cut this easily is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, like you. I think what would have made this really nice is if Dorian Brogg were like, damn, that's a tough hide, but we're still going to go through, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, Drew Peter, you know, it's a pretty tough guy to cut, okay. But yeah. um, no, none of that, just say, hey, you're blocking the sun god, man. No hockey needed. No yeah. black blade needed. No, like, the, they used observation hockey, but like on Luffy, theoretically. I so it's like, yeah. <sighs> I saw something really funny somebody said, and it's it's something I would say too. Where it's like, well, I mean, technically, Bragi took down a VA with with one swing, no hockey. So does this? Yeah. And so now that Dory's here, does this mean that a V like two VAs equal one Gorosi member? I'm like, maybe, maybe that's a thing. I, I love the goofy power scaling. It's it's hilarious. Her ability goes yes, like like they like. There's no like. That's the thing. Like Venus can't be this flimsy. You know what I mean? Venus, there's no way I can see him being, like, torn apart like this and just regenerating. Like, can he regenerate? Sure. Let's give it to him. Yeah. Uh, but, like, will he be handled like this? I don't think so. And that's what's weird. It's like, Saturn was, like, it. Like I was hoping it was a one-off thing. Because, like, like this is a, this is a thing. Just because you have the power of regeneration, and let's say it's it's costless, like, it doesn't cost you anything to use it, you, st- like, you... St- Still don't use it like this. Like there's, it's like, not like I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm remembering like there's a JJK thing where it's like people edited it with Buggy instead, and it was the plant person. The plant person is like regenerating through all the cuts and stuff like that. And like, well, that made sense because it's they're probably just like flexing on a situation. Like that was a cold appearance, but this isn't cold. This isn't cool at all. Seeing his head lopped off. And Saturn blown through buildings and coughing up blood is not the same thing as walking through active war zone and just getting taken hits after hit and instant regenerating. Like, like I'm thinking like Sword Art Online, uh, probably the only good scene that like people can like say like you can't deny that, that part was kind of cool when he maxed out his stats so far ahead of everybody else that when an entire guild of like assassins came to attack him, he just stood there. Because his his re, his defense regen and armor was so insane that they they could not even land a blow that made him drop a tick right and that's cool that's not what's happening here in that thing he just walked across a bridge they were trying to fight him and he was unperturbed that's not that's not this that's not what Saturn was showing that's not what Drew Peter is showing his head is lopped off and maybe maybe he goes the route of growing more uh, worm stuff so it works for him but that's not how Saturn was shown. And like, like I don't, I wouldn't like it if all of the Gorosei are depicted like this, where just like paper mache that never die, and then there's just like this... paper mache that never dies. Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's. No, I I agree. I mean, like you know, when people say the regeneration thing is cool, I I agree. Like, yeah, like that that is something we could fall back on, and that's why I fall back on you know Saturn a lot. Like, hey, like doesn't look great, but I mean, at least he's regenerating. But even then, like, go to any anime, any other anime where you have somebody who regenerates. They, they still, like, take no damage, or they still fight really well. 
Yeah. And it's like the regeneration is just like on top of everything else. Like over here, that's like that's like their bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. And like if you're just pure regeneration and healing class, like that's a support thing. And those characters are also depicted in a way different way where they're like surviving the onslaught to sacrifice themselves by the end of it. The course they aren't going to do anything like that. And they haven't been uh, the most like impressive thing is there that, you know, they all took their roles. They're all doing their own thing. I like that. No talk. Maybe they're using telepathy. That's cool. I would like to see them use the force. I think also another example is what's cool about St. Venus, the Kotsu was like this hybrid form and like him in human form and doing stuff. And like it, it, maybe that's the trend. Like these forms are just like, like Kaido in dragon, full dragon. Like he has the defenses. And then when he goes into hybrid, I guess he's like slightly less defensive but he's more com- like offensive, so maybe that's what we end up getting. But like, if that's the case, why are they being depicted depicted like this right now against the giants, against Kari Navan, Kuma, Bonnie, whatever, whatever character, Sanji, anything. our mom. Yeah, yeah, our hypothetical mom that's you paralleled, analogized to to Zoro. In, in the, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So like, again, uh, the Gorse is gonna be fine. I'm not worried. It's just there's an inkling where they're like some of them. Fall they're not the durable. Yeah, yeah, and I don't I don't know if all of them are gonna show up like Saint Venus. Saint Venus is showing us stuff like I could see more of that and be excited. Imagine imagine Brooke fights Venus, and then Venus is like, oh no, my bones are broken, and then he has to like recover from that. It's like, damn, I don't know. Yo, there's a world where S- 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 Brooke can like take over his body. It's like yeah. an empty dead vessel, right? Like maybe if he's actually the okay that's worse from brooke that'd be crazy if brooke could just like possess him who knows who knows like that that's I, that, I, brooke I, would do the astral projection that people wanted the gorsi yeah. to have as, as much as we slandered them i really i really hope for the best man yeah i, I, I hope i hope they i hope next chapter they put up a really good fight it would just suck if like some of the final villains have been hyped up for so long just keep on getting waxed even well, if they and, do regenerate, even if they do regenerate, just, you know, have them land a nice hit where we're like, you know, like even an Arlong feat where Arlong bit Luffy and, and Luffy was like, oh, damn, like that really hurt. His teeth are strong. Yeah. Like just just one line, one line saying, wow, these guys are powerful. Like yeah. everything so far is just like, wow, they're scary. Nothing about power, though, you know? Yeah. And, and Luffy's like, I, I don't know why I'm not damaging them. And that's just that's yeah, not, he was more that's frustrated. Not as like Luffy gave more respect to the Seraphims, like yo, they're as tough as Kaido, and like he hasn't even said that about these guys. <laughs> yeah, you're right, he hasn't said that about them. Damn, he's just confused. And like, like <sighs> listen, confusion works well in fights, especially street fights. But like, it, the thing is, that's why I was saying earlier that like this reveal is like it's almost bittersweet because it. I think. I think most people I've talked to think that the Gore Saves reveal, especially the last chapter, feels a little early. Getting the full reveal, yeah, we're brain broken by Oda, hiding it. But even from a base standpoint, if these were the end villains, revealing them like this is crazy. Because, like, I don't even feel like we got full reveals of the Blackbeard Pirates. We got, like, Inklings, but we got more of the Gore Save now than Van Auger and Jesus Burgess. And, and, and stronger. We have more about the Gore Save than than them. And, like... Again, going back to it, Oda did say originally this is a story about pirates fighting the Yonkos. And the world government was propped up. Again, I'm not going to say that like right now they're fodder, not that they're like they're just a breeze in the wind for the end of the story. But they're also like in this weird bucket of like, they're not scary, but they are scary, but not to us. But like, like yeah, everybody who's watching the transmission, if we cut to the feed right now, terrifying. These are the world leaders, scary. But like that doesn't apply to us when Luffy's out here like like jump roping, pancaking, pizza tossing them and laughing. And then the two guys who got beat by Mr. Three technically by a TKO, they come in casually walking, strolling, slice them, not even name move, just mid conversation, right? Like, and then you add the context of like, hey, if Zoro's out for the count, they're not gonna even fight Zoro. So like Zoro's not gonna fight them. So it's like, is that a real is that a real opponent if Zoro's not even up for it, right? It's like And no. then Sanji's still on his way dropping off Vegapunk. We don't know what he's gonna do afterwards. Is he gonna go back for Luffy? Is he gonna stay on the ship with Frankie? We have no clue yet. Yeah. And so like 
it, it's a weird realm because like we believe in the Gorosei, but like slowly and surely like a cap is being put on on where they go and I'm starting to feel like like the, the emu aside emu is still separate in my mind but the Gorosei is like like Oda is using that to introduce possibly insane holy knights because at least we, we know like for Garland has to be a combatant a combatant like to a certain extent we saw him actually fighting we never really seen these guys like in combat right like they've been in a room and so it's like maybe they're just really scary and really terrifying but like maybe the holy knights are the terrifying plus the combat and then emus everything right they could be an end stage villain but right now like yo like shanks and blackbeard Versus, like, if, if Luffy faced off against Shanks and Blackbeard right now, I might be more afraid of Shanks and Blackbeard a little bit. If Than Shanks the Gorosei? And Blackbeard, we're, like, duoed. You know, like, the duo. Oh, team, yeah, right? duo, like, two of the strongest people in the world, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then we, we're supposed to have five, like, like I'm not going to say five Shanks, but, like, let's line up Shanks, Mihawk, uh, uh, Garp, uh, uh, like, some of these end-stage characters. You put five of them five of your top five in this room i think you're more scared of that top five put kaido big mom garp uh uh akainu shanks uh, is that more than five take one out yeah, put in, whatever it is and and i think we're still a little bit more afraid of those five than the gorosei which is weird yeah i i would agree yeah shanks mihawk akainu shanks mihawk akainu kaido kaido and it's throwing Garp. Just throw it. Rod, like, Garp is alive, but, like, even Garp. Oh, did I, I, I didn't put Blackbeard in there. Sorry. Oh, yeah, oh, Blackbeard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was, I was and, like, I'm missing a very obvious one. And you can even tap people in and out. You can tag them in, tag them out. You can it, put Rob Lucci in there, to be honest. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you, you can squeeze Rob Lucci in place of, like, Akainu, even. The Saturn of the group. Because Saturn is, like, what Lucci would be in that realm of, like, if you put Lucci against Mihawk, yeah, like, he's yeah. not doing right he's he's should be skinned alive right so it's like i am and and in no world is dory and brogy walking up to any of those any of those mid conversation slashing no Here. nobody in the verse is walking up casually to any of those five let alone a group of them you know that's why how about this here's a uh, hmm the last thing we're going to talk about Okay. What do you think about... He's kind of slipped our minds a little bit. But Kizaru's here. You know, speaking... Like, because you said a kind of... Like, Kizaru's here. I don't know what he's going to do at this point. You know, yeah. at first, you know, him betraying Saturn, I, I could see that because it's just one guy. At this point, I can't I can't see a betrayal. Like, they're, yeah. like all of his bosses are here, dude. He's going to get a pay cut heavily. Yeah, uh, he's on his knees. Please forgive me. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, what, what do you think Kizaru's role is now? See, that's why I personally, before, if you remember 1108, uh, before we knew that Saturn was going to bring reinforcements, I was yeah. saying, like, holy knights. We needed to, they the, from the chessboard, it felt like we went through the entire thing. If you go back to that episode, I went through every single option, and it only made sense that Saturn summoned somebody. How? We don't know. And at that point, the holy knights made sense. And the holy knights made sense because they would not cannibalize kizaru's role in the thing where it's like this entire time he's been the front man saturn hasn't done nearly as much as kizaru in in most regards he raided the island he dis disheveled most of it he took down the ship that vegapunk was doing uh uh and, and if anything the moment saturn came is when kizaru was taking the most l's right like bo on both sides he lost his friend and yeah. like uh, uh, uh he had to even uh, the broadcast is going up. All these things, right? Luffy's revived. Kizaru is the one who put Luffy down in the first place. And uh, Saturn's there and he couldn't keep him down. So it's like uh, he got distracted by a 12-year-old girl in his hands and couldn't kill her by his own means. Had the Vice Admiral shoot at her. So it's like at, at a lot of the ways you could frame it that Kizaru's handicap is Saturn. And now we have five handicaps. And Nusajiro is the only one pulling pulling rank, giving me hope. He's the only Maybe one. Maybe Itsumare. He hasn't Maybe. done anything but... It, hey, the brain it cells aren't depends. there. Yowing straight into the thing when maybe he could blow. Like if can if the if the if the Marines thought their Buster call cannonballs would eventually get through just by brute force, surely Itsumare has some kind of ability that could break through the thing, right? Like maybe I would, I would hope head, to imagine 
instead of head first crashing into it, relying on probably what's regeneration, which again, isn't even that impressive because Bonnie did it. Bonnie did it. A 12 year old girl survived that dome that the Itsumari, a giant yokai mythical dragon uh, bird lizard monster, surviving it is a no brainer. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it doesn't even need to crash into it. But, you know, uh, uh, when you when you're asking where Kizaru lies, it's like I think I think he's just saving the Marines at this point. Like I feel like that's what his he gets the Marines out of here. Like I think he's essentially like if all five of them are there, unless they call for him, yeah. I don't think he has a reason to get back. And right now, the 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 Marines are in a weird spot because the Vice Admirals want to cat Bonnie. Bonnie's going to the coast, which is closer to Kizaru, because we don't know where Sanji's going. So it might be like Oda creates this bubble with Kizaru where the Vice Admirals are actively going to Bonnie. I think it's reiterated in this chapter. They're taking out all the pacifistas, which again is where Bonnie is going to end up being because they have Kuma, plus they're on the coast where Nosajiro's running perimeter. And again, we don't know where Sanji is, but if Kizaru's on the ships and they're being attacked by the pacifistas and now things are fine, it might be that, hey, Kizaru, if if the flipping thing is there, then it might be he disengages, right? He lets Nasajiru, he lets everyone take care of stuff. And unless Nasajiru is like, hey, yo, Kizaru, get back. You, you want your bonus for the end of the year? Get back here. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't see that happening. Ooh, but was, imagine, imagine Jew Peters actually dying. He's like, oh, Kizaru, please save me. And then Kizaru like tips his fedora, just walks away. Makes, yeah, he just walks and away. And makes an exit. It, oh, see you later, dude. It is it, like, I don't know. I, I'm with you on, on just like this question is so weird because Kizaru is almost being treated like a side character in a, in a lot of ways where he's like, he's like, He's like the Sentamaru to Kizaru and Sabaudi, right? Like we thought yeah. Sentamaru died on Egghead and then he came back, said some things. It's like that's I know where Kizaru was at now with five of them here. So it's like, yeah, what and the thing is, you know what's even funnier is like I made a joke earlier that the summoning circle might stay open and then Akainu is at Marajwa and if he's going to talk to the Gorosei, which would make sense after coming to protect it and uh Kumo was just there, and then he's like, Yo, what's happening? He's like, hey. What's this? And he walks into it like like Scooby Doo or Frankie or like something. Like he walks into the thing, and then he's like Jinkies, and he ends up on Egghead. Jinkies. That, I don't know. Like Akainu and Kazaru team up, and they're they would be more threatening still. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah. If, if they pulled out what a Kuzan and Akainu did on Punk Hazard, which would make sense because it's now Egghead, which is Vega Punk's island. If two admirals came and terraformed the island again. That just kind of is a pattern at this point. Like, I don't know what to, what to expect, but, like, I think it's good news if Akainu shows up for Kizaru. I think it's bad news in most regards because, like, Kizaru is just going to take a back seat, and it would just be a narrative thing rather than, like, a, like a, we see what's going on 